How do you create light? It takes patience. It takes knowledge. It takes a deep understanding of how light behaves. How do you illuminate the sporting feats of champions? Feats that inspire us all. Feats that move nations. It takes people, scientists, engineers and marketers. It takes materials that can withstand all elements. It takes machinery, cutting edge machinery. It takes a sustainable approach using recyclable, reclaimable materials and offsetting emissions. It takes pressure. Pressure to expose and eliminate weakness so that all that's left is strength. But more than anything, it takes belief. Belief in your product, belief in your team, belief in yourself and your ability to outpace and outlive the competition. It's that belief that creates light. range of sports fuel. Gatorade. You fuel us, we fuel you. Every jump. Every petrol pump. Member deal and welcome meal. Every gutsy save. Friendly wave. Every ray of light. And movie night. Every helping hand. And every taking a stand. Every day, everything we do helps our members to save, enjoy, and simply keep on moving on. Imagine storing energy now and using it later. Imagine traveling time zones without the dirty footprints. Imagine being remote yet connected like never before. Or knowing there's enough light to wait out the storm. Imagine knowing it's there when you need it most. Imagine neighbourhoods pooling power and communities run by the sun. Or having lights that see you coming and safely guide you home. We're connecting South Australians to an energy future we can all be proud of. So imagine the power of possibility. Sure. This beer looks pretty good, but actually, it's what you can't see that makes this beer at Coopers. Because every drop contains 160 years of passion. Determination to keep a family recipe unchanged. And proud, fierce independence. And it's this stuff that will always make it forever original. Every deal. Every welcome meal, gutsy save, and every friendly wave. Every helping hand, and every taking a stand. Every day, everything we do helps you to... Keep on moving on. How do you create light? It takes patience. It takes knowledge. It takes a deep understanding of how light behaves. 
How do you illuminate the sporting feats of champions? Feats that inspire us all. Feats that move nations. It takes people, scientists, engineers and marketers. It takes materials that can withstand all elements. It takes machinery, cutting edge machinery. It takes a sustainable approach using recyclable, reclaimable materials and offsetting emissions. It takes pressure. Pressure to expose and eliminate weakness so that all that's left is strength. But more than anything, it takes belief. Belief in your product, belief in your team, belief in yourself and your ability to outpace and outlive the competition. It's that belief that creates light. Good afternoon and welcome to Service FM Stadium for this WMPL and Women's State League One Cup Final. My name is Spiro karanikos Mimis, and I'm delighted to be your host today. With me right now on the game for our pre-game show is Hayley Routley. Hayley, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. Um, fantastic to be here. Um, great atmosphere, as you can already hear. Yeah, absolutely. You can probably hear some noise behind us, folks. That's the uh, presentation of the Division 1-2-3 Cup. And uh, just looking over, is Modbury Vista successful against Pembroke Old Scholars? So congratulations to Modbury Vista. But the main event is not too far away, and this should be an absolute ripper of a game it is first versus second in the league and Haley, it is of course West Adelaide versus Adelaide City absolutely so we knew both of these teams would be here actually two completely different teams from last year's final which is exciting um, but we've got the real Adelaide derby back for the, the cup final this year um, both teams will be very hungry to win both had um, not so great successes last year so they'll be using that as motivation for this year absolutely and you can see in front of us folks this is what it's all about today the beautiful cup that both West Adelaide and Adelaide City City are gunning for today. Of course, West Adelaide were crown premiers uh, during uh, last rounds of the WMPL. Uh, they're trying to complete a uh, a treble. Yep. And uh, this will be step number two in that journey. Of course, they are the premiers. They want the cup, and of course, they want the championship, which they went so close to last year, Haley. But just how much do you think that loss might affect? West Adelaide's mentality, they were so good against Salisbury Inter in the grand final last year and just fell over in, at the last uh, last yeah, step. Absolutely. I think them winning the Premiership, having sealed that at the end of round 16 last week, would have helped get that proverbial monkey off their back in terms of winning a trophy and breaking that drought. Um, before last week, they had only two senior trophies in their cabinet. They now have three, and within seven days, they could possibly have doubled that. Um, so I think they'll be using that as extreme motivation today. You know, you think of a club like West Adelaide and its history and you'd think that have more in their trophy cabinet than those, right? But they, they have just been so close but so far on so many occasions. Obviously this year they've been one of the best teams, well, the best, best team, team. All, all season. But, you know, Adelaide City was the only team so far to beat them this year. Uh, we'll look at the, that round one game shortly, but why don't we just rewind briefly to round 10 on the 10th of June where West Adelaide beat Adelaide City 2-1 at uh, Adelaide City Park. We'll have a look at that game because it was the most recent fixture. We'll get some highlights on the screen for you uh, very soon. In fact, here they are. And I really thought, Hayley, that for long periods of that game, Adelaide City were the better team and they, they must surely take some comfort out of that. Absolutely, and um, we knew it was going to take something special to break the deadlock that day, and it did come in the form of a 93rd minute um, free kick from outside of the box. We knew it would be uh, it'd need a freak moment um, for that to happen, and it was almost the last kick of the game where West ended up sealing it. Um, so City will be disappointed with that result, but as you've said, take some confidence that they came so close and they were quite depleted um, in that game in terms of their regular starting 11 as well. Yeah, you could just see there on the highlights that City took an early lead with that penalty and and they really could have been miles ahead in that first half and they missed a couple uh, really good chances. I, 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 I vividly recall because I was on the sideline uh, this game, Haley. Um, mm -hmm. Yasmina Kasumovic, who's on the bench today, had a really good one on one and just put it wide of the post. And, you know, they, they were so close that night, Adelaide City and West Adelaide had been rampant all season. And they really gave them a, a, a solid game. And it took something special from West. There was their equaliser. A lot of concern about that being offside. But in the end, the assistant and the referee confirming that it was mm -hmm. onside. But you know, it took it took a lot for West to really knock City over that night. So I, I, I get the feeling that even though West are 
you know, raging favourites today. Yep. Um, Adelaide City will take a lot of comfort in knowing that they've beaten them once, the only team to beat them, and, and really gave them a, a game at, at Adelaide City Park. Yeah, it was the first time that West was really challenged again since that round one um, match. Um, and we always talk about City having the recent dominance over West besides this season, but looking back, there's actually been quite even fixtures um, in this matchup. So out of 33 games, uh, I think we find that 19 wins to City, 17 to West and six draws. So it really could go either way. Yeah, there was that uh, ripper free kick from Nicole Blackett, like you said, deep into extra time there, Haley. that uh, sealed the game for West Adelaide. Talking about uh, Nicole Blackett, uh, Matt Mays from Football Australia, Football South Australia, spoke to Nicole Blackett, the captain of West Adelaide, during the week. Let's have a listen to what she had to say. Oh, it's be amazing. <clears throat> Obviously, the minor premiership is you know, a great achievement as well. Um, probably a little bit underrated in my opinion, but... Um, yeah, to go to would be awesome. It's obviously the goal at this point. Yeah, we've obviously now at the top of the league for the um, past few few years. Um, but I think it's totally different now. Uh, we've definitely got the team to do it. Uh, I think last time we met in the cup it was 4-1 or 6-1 or, or something like that, so it got pretty ugly. Um, but I know we got the troops to get it done, so pretty confident. Yeah, 100%. I think, you know, there's some, a lot of unfinished business. I think we were close last year, obviously, just not close enough. Um, couldn't hold on, but again, completely different team. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, obviously, it's great facility here, and yeah, to mark some history and make it us would be awesome. Words there from the captain of West Adelaide, Nicole Blackett. I know we'll talk about Nicole a little bit in more in depth uh, later, Haley. but you just feel if she fires, then West Adelaide's in really, really good chance tonight. Yeah, what we've seen all season is that when Blackett's playing well, the entire team is playing well. And they're probably getting a little bit sick of um, being asked about whether they're using past motivations, um, past losses as motivation. So today might be the day they finally put that to bed. Absolutely. Uh, let's have a look at some highlights from round one on the 26th of March. That was uh, the only time this season that West Adelaide lost, and it happened to be against today's opponents, Adelaide City. It was a 5-3 scoreline, if I'm not mistaken, Haley, and, mm -hmm. and it was round one a long time ago, but... If I was Angelo Paul, I'd be plastering that scoreline all over the change rooms, if I'm being honest. You can see the highlights as we, as we talk over that. This one must be the one that, that Angelo Paul must think, we've done it once, we ran them close, you know, in the uh, second game, we can do it today. Absolutely, and we've heard from both um, Tracy and Emily Hodgson that they needed that loss in round one to really spark them, that they weren't gelling properly, um, they were second to the ball, they just didn't want it enough, so let's see how they've used that as motivation coming forward, but most definitely for City, what a rampant performance, having put five past West, uh, no other team has even come close to doing that this season. Yeah, we just see again the highlights and that one sneaking into the back post, and you know, these two teams have such a historic rivalry like you said the Adelaide mm -hmm. Derby Haley, and you know they, they don't like each other but they respect each <laughs> other right um, so there's a lot playing on this one today and they are first and second in the league mm -hmm. and you know with respect to Adelaide City it's probably not the strongest team they've had for a while but they just know how to win games don't they and they find themselves second on the table and and the team that everyone's looking at going can you stop West dominance absolutely I think Adelaide City have a, a big uh, balance between senior players and some new players. So Angelo Paul made a lot of new youth signings this season, um, but obviously they were quality and they're being mentored quite strongly by the senior players of City, who of course have been around the traps quite a bit, have been on the um, Adelaide United A-League women's team. So obviously they've found that balance. Yeah, absolutely. And you could just see the goals going in here at, uh, I believe that's West Beach, um, the uh, facility down there. That was 4-1 and it did end up 5-3, but... You know, West, they drew a few weeks back against the Inter and sort of after the game, Tracy Jenkins, the, the coach, got them on the park and just said to them, look, this is going to happen. You know, you can't go the whole season, yeah. you know, winning every game. And, 
you know, despite their dominance, despite their dominance, I, th- I, I don't think there'll be any complacency in West today. They're, they're not the type of team right now to sort of sit back and go, oh, yeah, well, this is, this is a piece of cake. This is a walk in the park this season. I don't think they will be. But And I, and I know we're probably harping on a little <laughs> bit about it, Hayley, but I just I can't help but think that maybe some of the recent failures in West history, and we, mm. we can take that back to that 6-1 yep. uh, game that um, Nicole Blackett mentioned in her interview, it, mu- it must be just a little bit something in there going, we can't fail again, surely, in a final. Absolutely, especially when there are still players on the park um, from the City side that are playing today. So they're going to come up against Dylan Holmes again, who did so much damage in that 2019 game. Um, so definitely no complacency at all. Yeah, absolutely. Danny Dibartolo is back in the squad this week after a short break. She's the captain of Adelaide City, and Matthew Mays from Football SA spoke to her during the week. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, yeah, it's a big moment. It's going to be huge Sunday. Um, 1v2, I mean, what what better way to, you know, display some good football? Um, yeah, they are young, but they're striving, you know, to become a professional player. Um, and, I mean, the experienced girls are definitely, you know, helping them, you know, settle the nerves and everything like that. Just put into practice what we've been doing throughout the season. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't let the nerves get to me. I mean, (laughs) nerves are good, uh, but I think you just play like it's your last game, really, and just put everything on on the pitch, you know. Um, Yeah, there's there's silverware at the end of it, and that's what we strive to play for. Um, And, you know... Being Adelaide City, being involved in Adelaide City, it's such a unique club. It's it's got a, a lot of its success, and um, yeah, we we want to bring some more to the club. It's huge. What 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 can I say? It, it's it's uh, going to be a fantastic day. Um, yeah, like I said, we've we've come up against them during the season. Um, We've beaten beaten them once. Um, I think I have a strong belief in the girls um, this year to take it out. We didn't, um, you know, get into the cup last year, so that's another, you know, motivation for us to really, um, yeah, take it out this year. On that was Danny DiBartolo, Adelaide City's captain. She won't be starting today. She'll be starting on the bench, but. She'll make an absolute impact, no doubt, when she gets, uh, does get on. What did you make of those two interviews from the two captains of West Adelaide, Adelaide City, respectively? Oh, I find it interesting that Danny brings up um, what we've already mentioned in that the squad does have quite a few young players as well. And it does bring up the interesting point that there's not only silverware on the line today, but we are also auditioning for A-League contracts. It's that time of year where they're all being announced. Um, so a lot on offer for the younger members of the Adelaide City side as well. I hope you're enjoying our coverage so far of this WMPL and Women's Stately One Cup Final brought to you uh, uh, live and exclusively on uh, Football SA's Facebook channel and YouTube channel at the beautiful Service FM Stadium. And it's my absolute pleasure to now welcome our commentator for today's game, Paul Marcacetti. Paul, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Spiro. Thank you, Haley. It's amazing to be here for the WMPL and WSL Cup Final. 29 teams started this competition and it's produced an absolutely classic final with Adelaide City and West Adelaide meeting in it for the fourth time. We're going to go through the team lineups. Uh, we're going to be starting with West Adelaide. They will have Annie Grove, the A-League goalkeeper, in, the, in between the posts for them today. Again, their back four is Laura Johns, Zoe Harrelampopoulos, Olivia Bramley and Emily Hodgson. In midfield, it's Anna Pritchard in the middle on either side of her, Maddie Daru and Mallory Mullen. And up forward, it's Nicole Blacker on the attacking left, Georgia Macri on the attacking right, and Rachel Quigley at centre forward. The subs today for West Adelaide, Erin Murphy is the substitute goalkeeper, and it's Shabourne Eastham, Sienna Cavino, Harriet Burnett and Emily Gale. Their opponents today, Adelaide City. We'll start with Claudia Jenkins in goal. The back four is Zoe Tolland at the right, Sophie Leschinski and Alice McCauley in centre-back positions, Alicia Nicholas at left-back. The midfield, of course, Dylan Holmes in the centre, 
with Ali Atkins and Bianca Gray riding shotgun with her. And up forward, it's Katie Bowler on the right, Marwa Samauro at centre forward, and Valeria Guajardo on the left. Seven substitutes named for Adelaide City. Abby Lucas is the, is the goalkeeper in reserve. And also Alana Ursino, Danny Di Bartolo, Chrissy Zikos, Natalie Francis, Merve Apasu, and Yasmina Kasumovic. Should be an absolutely tremendous game here today. Going to be looking at some of the key players today for West Adelaide to start with. Emily Hodgson, six seasons with Adelaide United. She never seems to stop improving. So much of West's attacking play starts with her at fullback. She has the pace and energy to push forward frequently as well as carrying out her defensive duties. She'll be very important today. Also, Nicole Blackett, we know, simply a match winner, as mentioned earlier. So many chances made by the work she does, usually on the attacking left, and her thunderous strikes have burst many a, many a net. So often when her team really needs a moment of inspiration, Nicole Blackett is there to provide it. And Rachel Quigley, a true great of South Australian football, a senior player for 15 years, and even by her standards, having an extraordinary season. 33 goals in 19 league and cup matches this year, and she'll definitely keep the City defence busy. For Adelaide City, Katie Bowler, a dynamic young player. She's a creative force, whether coming from out wide or from more central midfield positions. And Bowler scored some exquisite goals among the 10 that she's recorded in either the league or cup this season. Dylan Holmes, of course, the cup queen. She's won this competition five straight times with Fulham or City from 2016 to 2020. She then went to Sweden and won the cup there with BK Harkin, one of Australia's best players of defence splitting passes, facing West's high press. That could be extra valuable today. And Marwa Samauro, she's scored in every round of the cup this year, and that included late winners when a round of 16 match against Comets looked like going to extra time. She keeps defenders guessing and often dropping away from the number nine position and turning provider. We reckon they'll be the key players today, but there are talented players all over the pitch, Spiro, and uh, I expect that uh, any single player could turn out to be the match winner in uh, this one. And uh, going back to you, I believe uh, we've got some interviews with today's coaches as well. Thanks so much, Paul. Excellent. They've taken the, uh, the uh, trophy away from me, Paul. I don't think they trust me around it anymore. And that's fair enough. I wouldn't keep a piece of prize uh, silver like that around me for too much longer. But you're right, Paul. We uh, did speak, uh, Haley and I, to Tracy Jenkins and Angelo Paul a little bit earlier today. And here's what they had to say about today's important fixture. Tracy Jenkins, first off, congratulations on sealing the Premiership last week. Do you put that game aside and focus on today as a standalone game or do you take the momentum from that win into today's game? Oh, look, I think it's a combination of both. I mean, I think we played well last game um, and we rely on that and there is that momentum and you want to go with the momentum, but it is a different game. Absolutely. And for the first 10 minutes, what have you instructed your side to do to get this game underway? Just to play and just to enjoy it. Um, we've played um, good football throughout the season, so for us nothing changes. Perfect. And you have met City twice this season in the lead up to this game. What have you seen in those games that you think needs to change today? Oh, look, I think we've developed as a group. I think that first game was, was good for us. It was a reality check and I think we've built on that. Um, I just think we get stronger and stronger every game. The girls are um, combining well. They know each other's games. They're very, very confident. Um, and I think coming into today, you'll see that as well. Perfect. And was it difficult selecting your starting 11 today, given the depth of your squad? Absolutely. It's always difficult selecting the squad, but we know that um, if required, then we've got those people on the bench that are more than capable of stepping into those positions. Perfect. Thanks for your time um, today, Tracy, and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Can you talk us through? Maybe I should do this first. Can you talk us through today's changes, please? Um, not too much changing. Um, we want to try and keep consistency from the, the past few weeks. Um, a few weeks back, we had a formation change. Um, so it looks like we'll probably go with that, that formation going into this game. Um, so yeah, so not too much is changing, but we'll welcome back Daniela back into the squad, um, which is a, a huge addition for us. Talking about Daniela, what does she bring to the team? Well, she's a very direct runner. She's a very good 1v1. She's a very good creator in the pocket, so and a lot of experience. So 
yeah, massive addition for us. Um, she's going to start on the bench because um, she obviously has missed a few weeks and she'll come on and make a good impact. Do you think being the only team that's defeated West this year gives you a bit of a psychological advantage today? I think so. I think the, the first game we, we played quite well and we were convincing in the win. Then the second time we played and we did actually lose 2-1 but it was to a last second free kick. Um, we took the lead early and we were very, very good managing the game defensively. On the ball we uh, could improve a lot but we had a lot of players sort of chop and change that week and so we, our preparation wasn't amazing. So considering that fact I think both games we draw a lot of confidence from and psychologically I think it can give us a bit of an edge as well. Angelo, best of luck in today's cup final. Thank you very much. And those were the interviews with today's two coaches, Angelo Paul of Adelaide City and Tracy Jenkins of West Adelaide. We're just a few minutes away from the kickoff of the 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup final. West Adelaide trying to win this trophy for the first time in eight years. And when they won it in 2014, they defeated Adelaide City in the final. City are playing in the cup final for the 12th time in the last 14 seasons. And they won it as recently as 2020 with a win over Adelaide Uni. But West are warm favourites today. They're looking to win a trophy in consecutive weekends after wrapping up the 2022 Premiership last Saturday. They're unbeaten in their last 19 league and cup matches. And Haley, as you mentioned uh, earlier with uh, Spiro, uh, their last team to beat them was, of course, Adelaide City. Absolutely. So that's going to be playing in both teams' um, heads tonight. Um, something for both teams at this venue, though, Paul, in that we've got the natural pitch um, favouring City, but perhaps the width of the pitch favouring how West like to play. So it could be anyone's game today, as we've mentioned on many different fronts. I think you're right. And I think one of the things that uh, the larger pitch and the, the more sort of energetic game that it's likely to be on the natural turf is whether that will suit West because they are a, a team that likes the big open spaces. They like to get the ball out wide and uh, they're, they're very, very much going to be facing a City side that's going to try to press them. Absolutely. So, yeah, as you said, Paul, we know West do like to play out wide and we also saw this kind of play out in that round 10 game where City and um, West did play each other. That City just ran out of legs right at the end because they were pre pressing so hard against West. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they go with the extra width as well as playing that high intensity game. Yeah, absolutely. The pitch has come up really, really nicely. Uh, it's been a very, very rainy day and a very, very rainy week uh, uh, here in Adelaide this week. Uh, what did you, you were out there a little bit earlier. Uh, looked uh, pretty good to you, underfoot. Uh, I'm really impressed, especially given the rain we had this morning. There were some call outs for us to have some sponsored ponchos instead of the nice get up <laughs> you saw us in earlier. So uh, yeah, it's um, not sloshy underfoot at all, but hopefully it's still just wet enough that we're going to see a fast paced game. Yeah, I think we will definitely see that. We should be seeing the teams walking out very shortly. I can see the uh, coaches coming out. And as you can see, you probably saw on your pictures that uh, some of the players are starting to make their way to the tunnel. Obviously, these are sometimes very, very nervy moments. And uh, I guess, Haley, sometimes the players just, you know, I know they soak a lot of this up, but some of them are really just antsy. They really just want to kick the ball and get going. Yeah, absolutely. And we know both teams like to start fast, so they'll be um, just egging themselves on to get out there. And hopefully um, there has been some talk with the senior players during the week, helping and mentoring those younger players to not become too overawed with this occasion. Um, although City, especially with a lot of their youthful um, signings, they've played finals before with NTC. So um, they have experienced a game of this stature at some level. Yeah, that's a really good point you make there because West doesn't really have much in the way of young and experienced players, uh, one or two on the bench, and that's really about it. But Adelaide City does uh, have a lot of inexperience. And I guess the other thing, we talked about their lineups, but if you th think about a couple of the players that they're missing today, well, okay, Matilda McNamara is no longer with the club, but she did play for them this season. She's now uh, gone to play professionally in Denmark. And, of course, uh, Izzy Hodgson has recently been at the Euro final in, uh, in uh, England and uh, hasn't made it back. Danny Di Bartolo starts on the bench, so... They are really challenged with a couple of these absences. Absolutely, I'm sure um, Izzy will be hoping that City can still bring football home, uh, Fadley City over here. Um, but they have been able to replace those positions fairly well. Um, Sophie Lefchinski has been doing really well in the back line. Um, but again, 
it's hard to replace the chemistry that was there with that Mac attack defence that we're so used to seeing for City. Yeah, no, it's a really good point. Though you're seeing the players walking out now past the trophy and the medals that uh, they hope they receive will certainly receive the winner's medals uh, at the end of today. And both teams, uh, great to see in their traditional kits, West Adelaide in the blue and white and Adelaide City in the black and white. And as we mentioned, uh, West Adelaide, can they make it two trophies in two weekends? Premiers confirmed last weekend and looking to win the cup final today. They hadn't won a trophy for five years. They'd only won two women's trophies in their history before last weekend. And now, Hayley, they could win two in a week. Yeah, absolutely sensational. I hope they've uh, made some room or got another cabinet or something <laughs> out there at West. Um, but, yeah, I feel like they'll be glad that they did cinch that premiership up before this game. Um, so there wasn't so much riding on it. But they'll also be wanting to look to do the treble as well, like Inter did last season. So this game is a great statement for intent going into that championship as well. Yeah, absolutely and of course, uh, probably getting ahead of, our, ahead of ourselves, but the championship is the one trophy that they haven't won, but uh, they won't be worrying about that right now. If they do win today, then yes, you're right, they are They are on for the treble. treble. The dignitaries are being uh, presented to the teams, being led out by uh, Minister Katrine Hilliard, the sports minister in the South Australian government, and uh, very shortly will be pausing for the national anthem. Um, are you uh, game to make a prediction, Hayley? Oh, uh, for me, it's West today, just based on the experience of both their starting 11 and their bench. I think when we saw their bench, we were gobsmacked about the depth that they've got there. So a tight game, 2-1. No worries. Here we are, standing by for the national anthem. Just a couple of minutes away from kickoff now in the 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup final. One thing we haven't really mentioned, uh, but uh, I think we should mention quickly, is the road that these two teams took to the final. Adelaide City had a really uh, tough draw coming into this. Had to knock over four WNPL senior teams, NTC, Comets, Metro and Burkala, but... West, a bit of an easier run. First, they had Vista, well, uh, a WNPL team, but then they had Cove from the WSL, big win over Salisbury Inter in the quarterfinal, and then the NTC Reserves in the semi final. They had a big win there, but to be fair, um, the NTC Reserves had knocked over Adelaide Uni sen senior side, so um, perhaps uh, a more meritorious win than it might look on paper. Yeah, a lot of magic of the cup going on there. Um Although you can argue that West had a bit of an easier run, um, both sides did have to knock off the former um, grand finalists last year. Um, so Salisbury Inter for West and City had to knock off Metro as well. So both deservedly have made it here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Just seeing the teams going into their respective photos for today's occasion. The referee today is Curtis Wordsworth. He also took charge when these two teams played the epic 2019 Grand Final, which resulted in Adelaide City getting a winner late, late in extra time. The assistant referees are Paula Orlandi and Kristen Nugent, and the fourth official today is Tom Brinkworth. We're just uh, looking at the players coming up for the toss. Uh, Nicole Blackett captaining West Adelaide today. And Bianca Gray is at least the on-field captain for Adelaide City today with Danny Di Bartolo uh, starting as a substitute this afternoon. Well, we've been very, very lucky that uh, the sun has come out. If you're uh, watching from outside Adelaide, I know we've got a, 
a few people that are watching in other parts of the world uh, this morning, it looked like uh, we were going to be out here in uh, the heaviest weather, wet weather gear imaginable, Hayley. Absolutely. I know a lot of other junior games got called off this morning, but luckily um, the gods have been kind to us and absolutely beautiful sunny day out there at the moment. Yeah, it definitely is. And just uh, want to make one small acknowledgement before kick-off on a, on a, on a sad note. Um, both t- sides are wearing black armbands today for Malcolm App- Appleby. Uh, he's Emily Hodgson's grandfather, passed away this week. Uh, I remember Malcolm very well. He would come out to support Emily uh, quite frequently and uh, often talk to us uh, before and after broadcasts uh, when, we were, when we were bringing the game. Here we go, though. Adelaide City versus West Adelaide. Uh, Adelaide City have got the kickoff and they will be kicking to the northern end here at Service FM Stadium. It's out of your picture but the stadium, the scoreboard is counting down the seconds until the kickoff of this game. We've just got 30 seconds left on that board. The way you're looking, uh, Adelaide City will be kicking to the right of uh, your screen. And their centre forward, Marwa Samauro, is over the ball. Big task for them today, but as we've mentioned... They've been very competitive against what's otherwise been a rampant West Adelaide side this season. All in readiness for the 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup Final, and we are away. McCauley with an early touch in defence for City. Over to Tolland, and early pressure from Quigley. My goodness, that was nearly a moment for Claudia Jenkins in the City goal, but she was able to pick up the ball and City playing with fire here at the moment. Just trying to pass the ball through while players like Quigley and Blackett are bearing down and uh, John's to come up to take the throw. In attack for West Adelaide, headed away by Holmes. It's been intercepted. Gray's going to need to try to save it from going out for a corner and does so. Another throw in to West Adelaide. This time, no, it's going to be Johns to take it again. Very happy, I'm sure they'll be, to be putting the pressure on straight away. Johns looking for options. Mullen is short. That's where it goes. Mullen now in a bit of traffic, but trying to get out. Coming through well there was Holmes. Johns might have to check back. Under pressure from Bowler. Daru. Now it's, now it's good pressure from City and Holmes has won the ball. Charging up the right-hand side, still going Dylan Holmes. Samaro's in the middle and so is Guajardo. If she can get a good ball in, that's not a bad ball. And good goalkeeping by Grove to make sure that she got there before a City forward could. Quick ball out to Blackett, but uh, knocked away from her. Johns brings it forward. Here's Leschinski, who was very impressive at centre-back for Adelaide City when these two teams last met at Adelaide City Park. Jenkins under pressure again. Finds Holmes. Trying to hit it on to Gray, but that's going to go out in a pretty frenetic opening two minutes, Hayley. Absolutely. It's kind of been even in both sides attacking halves, and this is exactly, I think, what we were expecting of this fixture. Both sides to come out fast and hungry and trying to get that opening goal. John's with the throw. Trying to get it up the wing for Blackett. It's going to fall for Holmes. In board. Atkins brings it across now. McCauley. Leschinski. A bit more patience from City now, but Leschinski tries to get it up for Guajardo. Intercepted by Hodgson. Pritchard, just a pocket of space for her. Blackett comes in board again. Tries to get Johns going, but Bowler's there. Been such an exciting player for City this year, Katie Bowler, after... Finishing her time with the NTC last season. Here's McCauley. Back in board for Leschinski. Samaro under pressure from Bramley. And Pritchard. Samaro does really well there to hold on to possession. Now it's McCauley. She wants to get Nicholas going on the left-hand side, but Hodgson's got that situation covered. Back to Grove. Just signed it on again for Adelaide United for the upcoming A-League W season, Annie Grove. 
trying to win more silverware for West today. Holmes. That's uh, intercepted by Mullen, and that's going to need to be a stoppage because it went uh, straight into her face. But uh, she's gotten up pretty quickly, so it looks like all good there for the Adelaide United midfielder. Mallory Mullins had a lot of substitute appearances this season. And a lot of injury trouble over the last couple of years, and hopefully now is starting to get close to being 100% if she's not there already. The City again, wanting to play up patiently from the back. Tolland, back to Jenkins. McCauley. We're closing down as fast as always. Hodgson's intercepted there. Daru just runs past her and Bowler's done well. Under pressure though. Holmes takes over. McCauley. Back to Holmes. And here's Guajardo. Scored two important goals after coming off the bench for City last week in their league match against Salisbury Inter. Game in which City turned a 1-0 deficit into a 2-1 win. We've played nearly five minutes here and it's gone very, very fast, I must say. Emily Hodgson with the throw. As West Adelaide push onto the attacking right. Daru goes past her. Chance for McCauley to clear. Bramley. Good touch. Hodgson. Bursting up the right. We mentioned it pre-game. It's a big part of the way West Adelaide set up their attacks. Pushing up their full backs. That means that people like Bramley and Harold Ampopoulos, the two centre-backs, really have to be on their guard. And on that occasion, Bramley was unable to prevent the ball going out for a throw. And uh, I feel like we're already starting to see a bit of the pattern of the game as it's unfolding. Yeah, very similar to that um, round 10 game. Um, both sides just trying to get into it. And as we said, West with their, playing their high defensive line and trying to push out wide. Um, but so far, they haven't been able to make it through, except for the Rachel Quigley goal done now. <laughs> well, that was uh, good work from Pritchard to win the ball to give Quigley the chance. Cross. Lackett's going to retrieve it. She's got Daru inside her. Oh, she's gone back. That's a dangerous ball because... Uh, Bowl is intercepted, and in the end, Laura Johns is fouled, and free kick for Adelaide City, and good anticipation from Katie Bowler. Oh, she's gone back. That's a dangerous ball. Starting in a whitish right position for Adelaide City today, but can move through anywhere in the midfield or up forward. Having a great season. Yeah, very capable player, Katie Bowler, in terms of getting those forward runs, and getting in behind defenders and dancing around the, the city players. Now, ball's been lost and uh, ambitious shot there by Daru. Just easy enough for Jenkins. And uh, Daru played in the 2014 Cup final in which West won their first Cup. Oh, in uh, West's win over Adelaide City, but she was in Adelaide City colours that day. Lots of these players... They've had a foot in them both camps. Lots of pressure on City at the moment. Jenkins has to clear now. Might fall for Holmes. Brings it in board. Now she's got an opportunity to get it out left, but Emily Hodgson read that ball, put it out before it got to Alicia Nicholas. Who'll take the throw. Back to McCauley. Back to Nicholas. West pressure high again. It's going to be another throw in for the Adelaide City fullback. Retired at the end of 2020, Alicia Nicholas, and a year out, decided to come back. And I'm sure the club is absolutely delighted to have her this season. It's like she never left. Pritchard, Blackett. Good play. Gets Johns going on the left. Now there's an opportunity here. Pritchard and Quigley are in the middle. Still Johns. And goal kick given, no foul. Johns doesn't complain. And the ball will go to Claudia Jenkins. I feel like so much of what's going to happen today is going to be on the basis of turnovers and uh, quick, quick 
counterattacks. Yeah, that's exactly what we've seen between these two in the past is who can um, get the other on the counter uh, first. Here's Macri for West. Keeps it in. Jenkins will get that though, but not for the first time. Adelaide City under tremendous pressure and trying to play the ball out short. And here they go again through Leschinski. Pritchard comes to meet her. She's done well to get the ball out to McCauley. And now Nicholas has got a little bit of space to push into. Inboard, Guajardo. And she went to where I think she was hoping Bowler would be, but Bowler had actually come inboard, and that's going to be a throw for Laura Johns. We City are sticking to their usual game plan of playing out through Jenkins in goal, but there's just that immense pressure from the West Front three. I'm biting out her heels every time. Yeah, absolutely. Here's Samaro. Touch for Guajardo. This is a good ball. Here's an opportunity now for them to open the scoring. But a great save from Annie Grove has denied bowler Samaro. Grove again. Great quick thinking by bowler. Nearly got her through with the opening goal, but... West Adelaide keeper Annie Grove stood up well. That's the first real chance of the game. Yeah, great double save from Annie there by two of City's most prolific um, goal scorers besides Guajardo. She's got a good ball out to Laura Johns, but Johns has done well, but that might be a foot raised against her. Just was a little bit close to Bianca Gray's head as she went to play the ball. So free kick to City. I tell you what, guys, uh, Angelo Paul not uh, sitting on his laurels down here on the sideline. Very vocal in this first 10 minutes and almost kicking that ball in with that chance for Adelaide City. Good ball there by Holmes for Nicholas at left back. Crosses. Bramley heads away. Pritchard tries to stab it forward for Daru and it's worked. Here's Mallory Mullen and now West might have some space. Macri on the right. Only Quigley up at the moment, but the numbers are coming forward, but... Macri's had two to take on, and that was two too many in the end. Leschinski finds Nicholas. Ball in board. Good anticipation from Pritchard, but she's given it away. Now, Leschinski can go again for City. And that's a really good ball. And Bowler's onside. Katie Bowler one-on-one -on -one with Annie Grove. Bowler goes around, must score. And it's been... It's gone in. Katie Bowler has given Adelaide City the lead in the 12th minute. She beat the offside trap brilliantly. And the underdogs are ahead. Well, we talk about youth in the city lineup, and Katie Ball has just stamped her name in history right there with that, um, sorting that one in. It's, it's almost like she has nerves of still Katie Ball. She's uh, scored penalties this season. She's um, just sorted that one home in the final. You wouldn't know that it's um, her first year out of the NTC. Oh, absolutely. And. Uh just for a moment, it looked like Harold Ampopoulos might get there, but by the time, as you can see there from that angle, by the time it did, she was unable to prevent the ball from going in. And just as happened when these teams last met at Adelaide City Park in the league, Adelaide City have taken the lead through Katie Bowler. It was a penalty on that occasion. On this occasion, she beat the offside trap and... That's something that we see happen quite a bit when these two sides meet. West do press high. And they do leave that possibility that if you get it right, you'll spring that trap. And that's exactly what just happened. Bramley with a free kick for West. It's gone over everybody and uh, Jenkins will collect in the end. I don't know if these things are pre-planned, Paul and Haley, but... Uh... All the West Adelaide substitutes got up and sprinted to the corner to warm up after that goal. I don't know if Tracy's sending a message to the 11 on the park. <laughs> now, once again, pressure on uh, City bringing the ball out. Now, Macri tries to get it in board and oh, gee, there was a shout for handball there. Referee Wordsworth not interested. Bramley, back to Grove. Grove has only conceded seven times in the 16 league and cup matches she'd played coming into this match that's how important she is for this side but exposed like that Katie Bowler got around her now 
Here's Blackett trying to change things up and get West back on level terms, but it's gone out for a goal kick. Excellent call there by referee. There was never a handball in that. Thanks, Firo, down at ground level. I must say from up here it's hard to tell where uh, that one did strike McCauley, but Wordsworth not interested and probably the right call. Mullen, Hodgson, Emily Hodgson. Quigley wants to get the one-two going with her. Leschinski was there. And we saw many a saving tackle, interception and clearance from Leschinski in that uh, game at Adelaide City Park that we've talked about. Johns with the throw. Blackett. Back to Johns and Blackett again. Here comes Bramley. Hodgson. Bit of time. Guajardo comes to face her. Macri. Mullen. What's in for head of her? She's just giving it away, though. Here's Holmes. Atkins. Gets it back to McCauley. It goes all the way back to Jenkins again and doesn't take any chances this time. Good touch there by Bowler to find Guajardo, but it's gone to Bramley. Now Macri on the right. She and... Hodgson had swapped temporarily, but that's gone out for a throw. And uh, while there's a long way to go, I'm sure that uh, this couldn't have gone better for City so far. Absolutely. Again, as you said, Paul, some is a carbon copy of that round 10 game where they went ahead early. Um, they'll just be trying to um, see this one out a bit better than that last game. The game management became a problem right at the end, um, but surely they've worked on that. Yeah, they were definitely under pressure late in that game. And... Uh, Still, they held out right until stoppage time when the lady on screen now, Nicole Blackett, did an absolutely magnificent free kick to win the game. Here's the Rue, trying to get Blackett going, although she probably would have been offside and it's probably worked out well for West with Bianca Gray conceding the throw. Johns to take again. Daru. Well, she hasn't been able to control it. Out for a goal kick. Claudia Jenkins. She's having a second spell at City. He's also played at Comets and she was in the Fulham United team in 2016 that defeated Adelaide City in this fixture. Dylan Holmes was too. Here's Quigley. She's also won this cup in, another, in other colours. Pritchard now. Gets the ball in early. Mullen. Mullen. Macri. Blackett! Just wide. It's always Jenkins worth a shot, it. though. <laughs> Absolutely. Jenkins probably had that covered. And I feel like... Uh, I, I really do feel like we're in a bit of a time warp watching this. Uh, City scoring early. Then West applying pressure and spending a lot of time almost camped out in the half that City's defending. But it's at the other end at the moment. But... In a comfortable spot for West. Grove. Samaro coming to put some pressure on her. Harlan Popolis. Johns. Back to Grove. There's a bit more space on the other side, so she comes out to Bramley. English defender. Brings it forward. Hodgson under pressure. Good play by Nicholas to dispossess her. Come back to Bramley. Grove again. Let's get it out left, but there's Bianca Gray for City. Leschinski. And it's back to Jenkins. We're in the 18th minute here at Service FM Stadium. 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup Final. Bramley just has to cover off Samaro there. Good ball by Grove out to Hodgson now. City always looking to close the spaces though. Leschinski now back to Jenkins again. Atkins. McCauley. Up the wing, Hodgson intercepts. It's gone past Mullen though. Now, chance for Nicholas to bring the ball under control, but Macri's read that situation well. Macri, Hodgson. Macri now. 
Gets the ball in for Quigley. Corner. Well, we do know Quigley is a huge aerial threat. I mean, she's got on the feet, she's got on the head as well. Um, so it was a very close opportunity. 100%. And Zoe Tollin did really well there to ensure that there was no greater damage than a corner. But it's the first one of the game. Blackett takes it short. Pritchard, slightly heavy touch on that. Gave McCauley the chance to clear. Blackett again. Trying to find the right delivery. Mullen. That is a good delivery. Bramley. Quigley. Tried to play it through for Bramley. Can Holmes clear now? She does. And, uh, West having some good attacking moments. Harold Popolis. Hodgson to reset again. Mullen wants it to her right. That's where it goes. Pushes forward. It's not a bad ball. And uh, Blackett's header just goes away for a, for a goal kick. And uh, we're in the 20-minute mark. And oh, does anything need to change for West in the way they set up on the pitch? They do like to get fluid with their positional movement. Yeah, but I think uh, West are a very patient team. And they're just um, playing the ball around a bit. And in doing so, probably wearing City down um, as well like they did in that round 10 game and then they'll pick their moment just to uh, find the back of the net and right now they're having another moment in attack here's Quigley getting the ball from Daru Blackett Pritchard he's offside free kick to City It's taken us uh, over 20 minutes to get the first offside of the game, yeah. Yeah, Paul, which is interesting when they're both kind of playing the offside trap. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's a good, good, good call. Holmes forward. Johns is there. Here's Grove. Tries to pick out Johns accurately, but uh, Sun was in Laura Johns' eyes, and that probably just prevented her from... Being able to control that ball. Here's Bianca Gray. She's getting forward. There's only Guajardo in the box at the moment, though. But it's been cleared. Quigley. Blackett. It's going to be a throw for West. To be taken by Johns again. It's a bit of a lull around the crowd at the moment. And uh, you just wonder if... What uh, we've seen with... The underdogs taking the lead. It's just surprised everyone a bit. Blackett, it's going to be intercepted by Leschinski. Cleared by Jenkins. Spiro. You may have seen on a shot earlier, Paul, that uh, Angelo Paul has a, a very special guest on the bench today with him. He's got Paul Pezos, the senior men's coach here at Adelaide City, but of course did wonderful things with this women's team, Paul Pezos, and he's joined uh, Angelo Paul on the bench. Well, here's uh, Emily Hodgson trying to make some things happen. And a chance for Blackett. Great save, Jenkins. That was hit with some power from Blackett. And the city keeper stood up. Yeah, we know Jenkins is a keeper who will never die wondering. Oh, that was a fantastic save from her. Yeah, of course, Angelo Paul was a assistant to Paul Pezos last year in the men's side of the Adelaide City Club. Here's Blackett's Bramley. Not quite. And uh, sure, there's not a huge surprise that he's there giving his assi former assistant a hand. Knows all these players very, very well, Paul Pezos. I also found it interesting from that shot that Angelo Paul is actually sitting down. I wondered what it would take for him to <laughs> sit down and um, perhaps be quiet for a little bit. Maybe, maybe he's 100% happy with the way yeah. his team's playing. Well... The game could hardly be in a better spot for them. With uh, a 1-0 lead halfway through this first half. Of the 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup final. Throw into Quigley, but it's gone back in the other direction. Gray, Bowler. Johns comes through. Harold Popolis. And back to Grove. Here's Bramley. Guajardo chasing. It's not a bad ball because it might get onto Macri's head. But 
Leszczynski was alive to that. And back to her opposing centre-back number in Liv Bramley. In board for Macri. Advantage is played. Mellory Mullen. Oh, good interception there by Leszczynski, but Daru takes over. And, uh, not sure if she was trying to get Blackett going on the left, but was misdirected. And uh, Jenkins is going to make Blackett come up to her to pick the ball up. And away we go again. Goes long. It's over Jenkins. Uh, over Johns, I should say. Alan Poplis. Now it's Johns. Quigley. Good touch. And Pritchard's ball, though. It's gone back to the city keeper, who will be more than happy, even though we're not late in the game, to just try to frustrate West as much as possible. On that occasion, she's had to give it away. Here's Hodgson. Good interception by Atkins. Hodgson wins it again. Hodgson and Atkins battling away. Nicholas might be able to clear and does. Now Bramley sizing up her options. Macri. Good interception by Atkins. And here's a bit of space for Samauro on the attacking left now. Mawa Samauro. Brings it back in board. Guajardo. Get Samaro going again. And uh, that's a foul by Macri. And a free kick to City. And just wondering if a little bit of frustration. Macri probably hasn't gotten into the game too much yet. And uh, going to have a bit of a stoppage. Absolutely. And we have seen in the past Macri and um, Blackett sort of interchangeably swap positions. So whether they need to start floating around the, the front line a little bit more and um, swapping sides. But definitely some frustration out there, which is what City would be aiming to do is suppress that natural game of West um, and then try and catch him with the errors. Yeah, absolutely. Nicholas to take the free kick. Good position to swing it in to try to find a teammate's head. There's a couple of players uh, who have good options here. Bowler is good. Leschinski, it's been headed away by Blackett. Atkins. Gray. Caroline Poplis comes out to meet her and that's going to be a goal kick. I think West, you're right when you say West being patient. They do need to be patient. They have got the players to score. They have got the, the setup to do it. But what they do need to do is just not let either the occasion or the score get the better of them. And City are having a relatively good spell at the moment. Atkins. But that may change very, very quickly. Rachel Quigley has dispossessed Leschinski. Quigley still going. Tolland did well. Throw in. Doesn't take much. One little error. Quigley was nearly away there. Good covering by Tolland. Blackett. And she has come out to the other side now, as you called. Mullen. Still going, Mullen. Should be cleared, but no, it's come out to Daru. Hodgson. Good ball in. Goes over quickly, though. Leschinski just touches it down for McCauley, who can clear. Bramley again. Caroline Popolis. Those two selected in the centre-back positions in uh, a, a spot that West have a lot of options in. Here's Macri. Of course, they've got on the bench today Shaborn Eastham and Sienna Cavino, both players that can play at centre back. A lot of competition for spots in this west side. Blackett now brings it in board McCauley, but Atkins came to her teammates' aid. West throw. Daru gives it back to Hodgson. That's been intercepted by Bowler. We go again. Daru. Hodgson. Blackett. It's all a bit tight in there. So Blackett tries to 
launch the ball into the box. It's come off Nicholas for yet another throw. Hodgson. Might get a chance to get a ball in now. Tries to take Nicholas on. Nicholas does well, but concedes the corner. And is it a set piece that might uh, change things here? Well, Adelaide City have been the victim of a few uh, set pieces this uh, season, but so far um, the West set pieces, nothing has really come of them at all, so I think City will be pleased with that. Hodgson's ball just a little bit much on that. And Quigley's only really able to get a slight touch on it. Thrown for City. As those chances accumulate, as I guess those corners and set pieces, if they're allowed to accumulate... Yeah, so the law of averages chance. tells yeah. us that they're closer to one. <laughs> That's right. We still have the throw through Johns. He nearly played half an hour. and Is, it, is this going to be an opportunity for Blackett? Jenkins is there. And I wouldn't say that West have really had more than one really good shot to force a save out of Jenkins. So City will be pretty happy with that. That's a great turn by Bowler. And now she wants to see if she can get Guajardo away, but that's going to be Groves. Long up the right-hand side. Atkins gets it down. Daru, Quigley. That's going to be a free. In fact, it's going to be brought back for an earlier free that was probably an advantage played for. Here's Hodgson. Blackett. Really wanting to take players on. And in the end... Three come to her to make sure that the ball goes out for a throw. Hodgson now. Mullen gets it back to her. Sorry, it's Mullen now. That was Pritchard that got the ball back to Hodgson. Now in Popolis. Now Johns. City's so quick to close the pass option. Just forcing West to keep going back to the back four. And that's exactly the pattern that we've been used to between these two sides. Not just in that match at Adelaide City Park, but even way back in round one when the teams met at West Beach. Good to see some of the uh, Adelaide City men's team here supporting the women. That was Nicholas Bucco on your screen just a moment ago. Back it's cross. Macri tried to get through. Pritchard's there. Guajardo to get the ball away. Gives Bianca Gray a chance to put the ball up the wing. That's all she can really do. Caroline Poplos. Back to Bramley. It's a good ball, but uh, for once, the wonderful first touch of Rachel Quigley lets her down. Another throw to West. Goes all the way back to Grove. Bramley again. Mullen wants it short, but it goes to Hodgson instead. Now it's Mullen. Caroline Poplis. Patient build-up. Johns. Daru, good turn. Pritchard. Nicholas was there. Mullen now. Are they just starting to knock on the door, West? Quigley. There's enough West City players back. Here goes Mullen again. Cleared by McCauley. Johns. Matt Cree. And Bramley pushes to the other side and uh, Samaro read that well. And Poplar's always misdirected and there's a chance here because Samaro is straight offside though. Um, it's going to be a free kick for uh, the hold on Guajardo and Matty Daru is going to get the first yellow card of the game. Uh, good play by Samaro. She started the pressure there and it resulted in that free kick and yellow card to Matty Daru. And uh, Guajardo is just going to get a little bit of attention.
not sure that it's too bad, but what, it, what this uh, little stoppage has done has given both teams the chance to regroup, have a bit of a chat. And uh, Tracy Jenkins, she never really seems to get too animated. She's calmly giving some instructions in the West Huddle. Angelo Paul also, I'd say, looking pretty happy with what his team's done so far in this match. And he's pretty calm too. Just before that, Paul, the uh, Wester assistant coach who's on screen now was not happy with that decision from the referee to award the foul. He um, had a few words to say to the fourth official who's standing on screen right now too. So definitely a little bit of heat down here on the sideline and I think West Adelaide have realised that... Uh, They've been the second second best team, I think, for uh, most of this first half, and they have to find something. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, uh, coaches and assistant coaches on the sideline are famous for their objectivity when it comes to referees' decisions. I don't think I've ever heard a, re uh, a coach or an assistant say, good call, ref. You're probably right there, Paul. <laughs> no, but uh, no, very much good to know what's going on because uh, what that is is a sign of... What you, what you said, there's a bit of frustration. And 1-0 uh, at half-time is not a disaster, but West will definitely want to be in a better position than that. Daru. Mullen. Just wonder if it's all a little bit slow in the build-up for West at the moment, or at least slower than they would like. Pritchard. Mullen again. As you said, Paul, we are used to West just transitioning so quickly once they normally get that turned over ball, but it does seem a bit like a, a bit of a slower pace right now. Yeah, it does. And, uh, can they change that now? Laura Johns has overlapped on the left, and she might be able to keep it in. She does, but that's uh, easy enough for Jenkins. And on this occasion, she's able to get the ball out with some comfort. Samaro getting the ball from Holmes. Guajardo's gone out to the right, but she's lost out there. Matt Cree, oh, good interception by Atkins. He hooks the ball forward again. Of course, uh, Atkins played for West in the grand final last year, which West Adelaide lost to Inter, but returns to Adelaide City this season. Giggly trying to hook the ball forward for Matt Cree. Gray concedes the throw. Now, West have been in this sort of position on several occasions. Just need to find maybe something a little bit different. City are doing really well to prevent them from getting crosses in from quality areas. Johns tries again there. It was intercepted. Leschinski gets it away. Bowler. Nicholas. And uh, we go again. With West able to build. Here goes Harlan Poplos. The way City defend, it's almost like a 5 4 1 formation when they don't have the ball. It's really only Samaro up forward, and, and there's just this, these two big lines of players. But Blackett's got some room there, but that's not quite where Quigley wanted it. And then when City come out, they break into their a more normal 4-3-3 or 4-4-2 type of setup. Grove having to do some retrieval work. Bramley. Brings it away. Hodgson's taken off on the right-hand side. And Hodgson's gotten the other side of the defence here. Emily Hodgson. She goes for the shot. Across the goal, but it was close. Goodness. Just for a moment. That looked like it might be heading in. But it was narrowly wide. I think if Pritchard had been a few steps ahead and could have been there for her. Yeah. It could have been a bit different as well. Just wide from Hodgson. It was a great move. But, uh, we mentioned it earlier on. She may be a fullback, but what she gives up the other side to the attack, both as a creative player and as a finisher even, 
is quite valuable to her side and she's had a great season. Now Bramley to try to bring the ball up to the right hand side. Here is Hodgson again but under pressure. It's back with Grove. And we're getting into that time where players will be thinking about the fact that they're close to the break. And what can they do about this scoreline before they go into the halftime break? Good touch there by Blackett. Still Blackett taking players on. That's a really good challenge by Leschinski. Came over here from Tasmania to play her football last year. And uh, she's looked right at home with Adelaide City. Was playing mostly at left back last season when the MAC defence was in effect. And uh, with Matilda McNamara gone, Leschinski's doing a great job in the centre back position. That's a long way off target by Millery Mullen. Goal kick. Millery Mullen will be grateful to have started on the park today, having um, played for into the last season and being on the um, bench for the grand final and wasn't risked at risk after quite an injury riddle season. So. Um, good to see you're out there today. Yeah, absolutely. I hope that uh, very, what I'm sure was a very frustrating run of injury is uh, behind uh, Atkins. Leschinski to McCauley. Press, press is the call. You might have heard it. And uh, good pressure. And Easton urging, Bramley I should say, urging her players forward. But... City with the ball now. Macri's done really well. Quickly just got a chance and must score Mallory Mullen and does. Well, finally, West Adelaide, after putting on so much pressure, made it count. Good play by Quigley. And Mallory Mullen was there. There are you, as we just said. She'd be so grateful to be on the park today and now she's just um, equalised for her team there. What a great interception there by Macri first. Quigley was alive to it. And Mallory Mullen was never going to miss from there. And it's 1-1. One, one. Patience just paid off there in the wave after wave of West resetting um, and coming back. It paid off just as we saw it did in the round 10 game as well. Yeah, it certainly did. And um, Mallory Mullen, was partly because of the little amount of time relatively that she's had on the park this year hasn't scored a huge amount of goals just two in the league so far and two in the cup and uh, she'll be absolutely over the moon to have equalised just then worth, no worth noting Paul and uh, Hayley that that's the third time West Adelaide dispossessed Adelaide City in their own box trying to play out and they got it on the third attempt they weren't going to get away with it three times that's for sure yeah good call Spiro they have been putting that pressure on quite heavily and uh, eventually it told. It's just one wondering now what that will do. I mean, will City stick to those principles of trying to keep playing out in that way or would that just maybe rattle them a little bit? Carolyn Popolis. Johns. Comes out to Bramley again. Formerly of Nottingham Trent University and Loughborough Foxes. Cleared by Nicholas. Guajardo. Holmes. That's a really good ball out for Bianca Gray. Gives her the opportunity to push up the line, but McCree covered her well. Harrelan Poplis gets it back to Grove. Bramley again, who no doubt would have been delighted to see her compatriots lifting the Euros recently in uh, that tremendous final between England and Germany. Uh, 
fantastic tournament it was and capped off with a great final, a great occasion. Brings it forward again. Trying to get Hodgson going. That move's worked once before. And Jenkins had to come out of the area and did so smartly. There's a chance for Bowler now. Good play. Takes it past Bramley. Blackett in pursuit. Blackett's done really, really well. And now she's just got it too far. And uh, poor little Landy. It's bringing the ball under control. And it's play on. Players are uh, all a little bit confused. But uh, play never actually stopped at that point. And now Curtis Wordsworth has blown the whistle. And the fourth official is just sending a message to the main referee to say it will be a West Adelaide drop ball because it's hit an assistant, which is the rule. If it hits a referee, it's got to go back as an uncontested drop ball to the team that had possession. Yeah, and what will be uh, a little bit frustrating for City in that particular situation is, well, the ball would have gone out and they would have had a throw. So, but those are the new rules. I've watched a lot of football, Paul, as I'm sure you have and you too, Haley. I don't think I've ever seen that, ever. Well, Nicole Blackett gives it back, and uh, I think that just uh, restores some normality to all of uh, the proceedings here. Lee Hodgson's just going to see uh, the ball out. We are closing in on stoppage time in the 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup Final. The score currently West Adelaide 1, Adelaide City 1. Hodgson. Caroline Poplis. Bramley gets it back to Grove. Two minutes of stoppage time. Caroline Poplis. Is it going to be a case of let's just uh, not take any chances uh, before we get in or will these teams try to find the goal to put them in the lead? I think we said that about West in round 10 and they definitely still kept going for it. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Absolutely right. Throw in now. Watch them just needing to go back a little bit. Can she get it back? But no, Mullins turned away. Pritchard, Hodgson. Now it's Bramley. We're into the second minute of stoppage time now. If there's going to be any more chances, probably just the one. Now Laura Johns has put a high ball up. Atkins has had a heavy touch there, put her team under pressure. But it's cleared in the end, and here's Harold Popolis. Johns back to Bramley. That's given away though, Bowler. She's lost out to Hodgson. Emily Hodgson now drives forward again. Tried to get the ball through for Quigley, but well intercepted. And now Samaro. Just for a moment, looked like she might try to turn the other way of Harold Ampopoulos. And uh, she's given away a free. And uh, this may well be, if West players are alive to the situation, because we have played the two minutes now, and what they'll probably want to do is get the ball in for one last chance because the whistle will probably go pretty quickly here goes Bramley to put it into the area no, Hodgson to do so Hodgson, that's easy enough for Jenkins and that is going to be half time after a fascinating first half here at Service FM Stadium Adelaide City taking the lead in the 12th minute through Katie Bowler and uh, it took until the 41st minute for Mellory Mullen to equalise for West Adelaide. And uh, we are probably set for a classic second half between these two sides. Just going to be uh, waiting to see uh, if we're able to get uh, some interviews at half time. Spiro is down there uh, with Adelaide City's Dylan Holmes. And Spiro, uh, when you're ready, go ahead. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Dylan solid 43 and a half minutes but just let that one go in right at the end but you've got to be overall pretty happy with that performance yeah you know we're a young team and we're trying to play a certain way and 
and there are going to be mistakes, but I think the cool thing is we're, we're trying to be as brave as we can and, and play the Adelaide City way. So, um, yeah, it's been a tough 45, but, um, yeah, hopefully we can make a few changes and, and have a good second half. There's a pretty strong wind out here. I don't know, um, we haven't really mentioned it much, but it's quite, it's quite breezy. Does that change your game plan in the second half? Seems to be favouring the side you're going to kick to in the second half. Yeah, I think so. I think that'll enable us to get a bit more pace on the ball when we're going forward, and, and hopefully we can create a few more opportunities through that. Right, good luck in the second half, Dylan. Thank you so much. I've also got Nicole Tilly. I called her Nicole Tilly. Nicole Blackett, I'm so sorry, Nicole. I, I, I've been trying so much to, to not do that to you. Look, to be honest with you, I thought Adelaide City probably um, had the better of that half, but you showed your determination to get back in. Yeah, I'd say the first 10 minutes are probably on us. Um, I feel like a lot of the play was down the end. Um, yeah, obviously I call it the opposition, but we just know if we you know, string it together and fight for it, we're, yeah, no one can stop us. You talk us through the tactical decision by Tracy to switch you on from the left-hand side back to the right-hand side. Uh, my decision, actually. Um, I just said, hey, Mac, want to swap? Had a pretty poor first half, the first half there, so I thought, change the scenery, come over. I thought I did a lot better. Good luck in the second half. Thank you so much. Back to you and Hayley in the uh, uh, comms box, Paul, for some, uh, some highlights. Thanks for that, uh, Spiro. Well, let's have a look at the uh, highlights of that first half. And here was that early chance for uh, Bowler. Great save there by Annie Grove. But on this occasion, Bowler sprung the offside trap, took it around Grove, and was able to finish just Zoe Heron Popolis, nearly able to get the ball away there. But uh, perfectly timed run by Bowler. Incredible composure in such a big match. And what a tremendous pickup she's been for City and uh, that was the goal I think that perhaps from a neutral's point of view was the one we wanted to see first with West being favourites today a shot from Blackett there weren't too many real chances were there uh, good bit of defending there by Tolland to deny Pudley Shot there by Hodgson just wide. It was pretty prominent in the first half, I thought. This is where uh, West pressure finally told. Great interception by Matt B. And uh, good awareness from Quigley there to get the pass to the onrushing Mellory Mullen, who finished really, really well. And is that play that we've seen from West all season where they have so many perfect goal scorers, but they're still happy to share it around with the others? Yeah, absolutely. They uh, finally made that pressure count and uh, I'd be delighted to, having gone one nil down, to have got back on level terms. A lot of uh, high-fiving on the bench as they <laughs> as uh, they scored that equaliser. Well, there are the stats at the moment. Uh, 10, uh, 11 shots to West Adelaide, 4 to Adelaide City. West with four shots on target to City's three. So you can see that even though West had a lot more of the play, when City did get forward, they were able to make quality opportunities. Just the one corner, three free kicks conceded by West, two by City, one offside each, and the one yellow card to Matty Daru. We're going to uh, go to a break very, very shortly, and uh, we'll be back with you to bring you the second half of this fantastic 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup final in just a few moments.
do you create light? It takes patience. It takes knowledge. It takes a deep understanding of how light behaves. How do you illuminate the sporting feats of champions? Feats that inspire us all. Feats that move nations. It takes people, scientists, engineers and marketers. It takes materials that can withstand all elements. It takes machinery, cutting edge machinery. It takes a sustainable approach using recyclable, reclaimable materials and offsetting emissions. It takes pressure. Pressure to expose and eliminate weakness so that all that's left is strength. But more than anything, it takes belief. Belief in your product, belief in your team, belief in yourself and your ability to outpace and outlive the competition. It's that belief that creates light. You're thinking, I want the world's most refreshing lemonade. It starts with a secret recipe. Using real lemons. And limes. Oops, that's the secret. Blend them, cool them, and wait till it clears. Looks like there's only one thing left to do. Let it out. to best athletes to create the most advanced range of sports fuel. Gatorade. You fuel us, we fuel you. Every jump. Every petrol pump. Member deal and welcome meal. Every gutsy save. Friendly wave. Every ray of light. And movie night. Every helping hand. And every taking a stand. Every day, everything we do helps our members to save, enjoy, and simply keep on moving on. Imagine storing energy now and using it later. Imagine travelling time zones without the dirty footprints. Imagine being remote yet connected like never before. Or knowing there's enough light to wait out the storm. Imagine knowing it's there when you need it most. Imagine neighbourhoods pooling power and communities run by the sun. Or having lights that see you coming and safely guide you home. We're connecting South Australians to an energy future we can all be proud of. So imagine the power of possibility. Sure. This beer looks pretty good, but actually, it's what you can't see that makes this beer at Cooper's. Because every drop contains 160 years of passion. Determination to keep a family recipe unchanged. And proud, fierce independence. And it's this stuff that will always make it forever original. Every deal. Every welcome meal, gutsy save, and every friendly wave. Every helping hand, and every taking a stand. Every day, everything we do helps you to... Keep on moving on. How do you create light? It takes patience. It takes knowledge. It takes a deep understanding of how light behaves. 
How do you illuminate the sporting feats of champions? Feats that inspire us all. Feats that move nations. It takes people, scientists, engineers and marketers. It takes materials that can withstand all elements. It takes machinery, cutting edge machinery. It takes a sustainable approach using recyclable, reclaimable materials and offsetting emissions. It takes pressure. Pressure to expose and eliminate weakness so that all that's left is strength. But more than anything, it takes belief. Belief in your product, belief in your team, belief in yourself and your ability to outpace and outlive the competition. It's that belief that creates light. Welcome back to Service FM Stadium for the 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup Final between West Adelaide and Adelaide City and there has been one goal scored by each side, Adelaide City scoring in the 12th minute through Katie Bowler and West Adelaide replying in the 41st minute through Mallory Mullen and uh, Hayley, it's been really really fascinating to watch how this game has unfolded but you get the feeling that West Adelaide will be over the moon that having conceded early they at least didn't go into the break behind and maybe now they can open up and play the game they really really want to play. Absolutely it's a weird juxtaposition of emotions um, for this game because we sort of expect West to go out and be the one to score the early goal um, and Adelaide City obviously did that and we know they were capable of that but yet we were still kind of shocked um, but West will be happy to come out on even ground almost as if it's nil nil again um, and reset and start to play the way they want to play. Yeah absolutely but uh, interestingly Adelaide City have made a half time substitution they've brought on Danny Di Bartolo that's not that surprising but I've, unless I unless I miss something it looks to me like they took off so Sophie Leschinski or was it Alicia No that's Nicholas? correct Paul Sophie Leschinski was the player came off It was thank you Spiro that's a really interesting move because that's a that's a forward for a center back West Adelaide is about to kick off the second half through quickly and Curtis Wordsworth says not so fast calls the players back. Could be that uh, he did that because a couple of West players had uh, sprinted forward of the line before the kick was taken. And we'll reset. Daru. Pritchard. West wanting to control their way forward straight away, but that's intercepted by Atkins and his Di Bartolo fresh on the pitch. Plays it back the one two now can she have an influence she's done so so often in the past here's Hodgson for West intercepted by Atkins Nicholas dispossessed by Blackett Blackett now Mullen it's been cleared away by Gray but here's Daru still going the West midfielder Pritchard Mullen Johns is on the overlap if she wants her but Probably just lost the moment there, but Johns has tried to play it in board. That's 
been cleared. Harold Popolis will get there first. Mullen now. In board. West controlling things at the moment. Good touch by Quigley for Pritchard. Under pressure though. Still has the ball, Pritchard. Now trying to get it through to Macri. Players all around there. West get out of jail, but not for long. Here's Hodgson now. Dispossesses Atkins. Still going, but Alicia Nicholas wins the ball. But a free kick has been given to Emily Hodgson for Atkins' challenge. And this is a position from which we know Nicole Blackett can threaten. Maybe just a little bit wider than she would like with her right foot. She does have the wind slightly against her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but that's point. never stopped during the pass, I don't no, think. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> and big opportunity now. She plays it in board. No, she did go for goal and uh, forced a smart save out of Claudia Jenkins. But it is going to be a corner in these first two minutes. They've all been played at the right-hand side of your screen. The northern end here at Service FM Stadium in Jeps Cross. Short. Black it now. That's going to be cleared away. Alan Popolis. Mullen. And, uh, that's going to be easy enough for Jenkins. Interesting reshuffling by Adelaide City, bringing off a centre back for an attacking left player in Danny Di Bartola. That's normally where you expect her to go, and that's where she is right now. It looks to me like right now Dylan Holmes is sitting in the centre-back position. And uh, possibly less surprising than you think. Holmes has played at that position before. In fact, when she was over in Sweden, she played in a defensive three on several occasions. Now, City with a chance up the other end, but good bit of play to clear the ball. It's going to be a throw in, though. Bianca Gray can come up to take it. She's gone to right back. Holland has gone into midfield. So lots of changes for City in the way they're set up. Gray to take the throw. Bowler does well to hold on. Does really well to get the ball in, but it's going to be Groves. Gets Hodgson going. Not really anything ahead of Hodgson. Tries to go herself. Does well. Doesn't quite get to Quigley though. Nicholas. Hodgson again. Daru. Mullen. And uh, here in Quigley, not quite on the way, same wavelength there. Nicholas has some time and space. But intercepted by Blackett, who's still pressing forward. City under pressure again. McCauley can really do nothing other than kick the ball out. And Haley Wester, just wondering if they're just ramping things up a little bit at the moment. Yeah, and this is what we did see in that round 10 game again, where West tried to turn it into a half pitch game and they were just mulling it around in their own attacking half, just looking for that error and that break and to catch him um, on the offside trap. Can be another throw to Emily Hodgson. Through turns under pressure from Atkins. Maybe Nicholas to bring the ball away. Tolland. The Bartolo under pressure. Pritchard might get there and does, but just managed to hold on. Get it to Macri. Hodgson. Blackett now. Good bit of play by Nicholas to win that battle. Guajardo. Bramley came through well there. Mullen. Lots of contests all over the park right now. Players putting plenty of pressure on each other. And Katie Bowl has won a free for Adelaide City. So Bianca Gray at right back. Dylan Holmes at centre back. Tolland into midfield now. Holmes finds Samaro. To be cleared by Harold Popolis. Back to Holmes. Bowler. 
Just goes past her. Johns just tries to control it for Macri there. Macri and Holmes, former teammates at Fulham United, they won the 2016 Cup together for Fulham. And now, only one of them can succeed today. Hodgson. Still going. Blackett now. That's not a bad ball. And well done, Jenkins. Quigley was bearing down. And Bowler's got a bit of space. Forces Pritchard to come and track her. Samaro gets it from Atkins. Alan Poplas. Now it's Pritchard. Still going. Samaro and Atkins put her under pressure. And it's going to be a city throw. City really probably want to avoid. I know this is the shape of the game, but they probably want to avoid just conceding such a high weight of possession to West in the way that they have so far in this half. Quigley. Pritchard. Blackhurt. Holmes gets it away. Only as far as Pritchard. Good play by Bowler. Liked her game today thus far. She's really not at all overawed by the occasion. Young player. Certainly one that has plenty of experience in this competition or at this level with NTC, but when you come and play for some of these big clubs, there's a level of expectation, and I'm sure that she has met them with interest. Di Bartolo wants to get Samara away, but Harlan Popolis was there. Guajardo, all at close quarters there with Samara, but she's held on well. Bowler, Bramley. Grove, I think probably her first touch of this half. Tries to get, get it out to the left-hand side. Gray was there. Gets it back from Harold Ann Poplis. Just waiting for a bit of movement, or just a little bit static for the moment. Bramley, not a lot ahead of her either. Grove trying to find Quigley now. Johns. Macri. Quigley's in board. Trying to get it back for Johns, but Holmes read that. Bowler. Gray. Bowler. Up on the right-hand side. Samaro. Harrelan Poplis was there again. Here's Samaro again. Strong in the challenge. Atkins. Now City's chance to have a bit of forward pressure. Nicholas going to keep that in? She does. Her cross only finds Hodgson. Hodgson fears Mullins there, but so is McCauley. And here's Atkins. Mojado trying to get it through for Samaro, but intercepted. That should be a free kick on Mullins. Oh, fascinating uh, opening 10 minutes of this second half. Absolutely, and we're still seeing the same gameplay um, again as round 10, uh, where West has all the possession and uh, City with all the defending to do, and that took its toll in the end, so they'll be wanting to change something up and turn it around soon um, because you have to play a full 90 minutes or more <laughs> against such quality side um, of West. Bowler. Comes to Samaro. Gets past Johns, does well. Has to come back in ball. Bowler again. Oh, and uh, Mullen nearly dispossessed her opposite number 15 in Bianca Gray. And uh, free kick uh, against Millery Mullen for a foul on Holmes. Referee Wordsworth had just allowed play to continue to see if there'd be any advantage. Now the ball will come back to Matilda Cap 209, Dylan Holmes.
<laughs> Bowl is short. That's where she wants to go. She's gone long. This well-weighted ball. Annie Grove is there. Hodgson now. Trying to find quickly. Tolland intercepted. De Bartolo under pressure. Kuchard does really well here. She's lost out. Jenkins. McCauley. Jenkins is well forward. Oh, and she's missed Holmes with that ball. Here's Macri. Oh, and uh, I'm not sure that was the right option, but quickly forward and she's going to win a free. That's in a much better spot for Blackett yeah, if she chooses to take that one. Well, this is definitely a range. And fortunate for West because I, I really thought at this point that wasn't the right option for Macri. She had Mullen available on the left there. But that foul will ensure that it's what we used to call Tilly time. Nicole Blackett. John's also over the ball. Of course, she is the left foot option here. Blackett. It was always rising. But, well, she's had a sighter now. And, uh, we want to give her another opportunity, that's for sure. Goal kick. Long by Jenkins. Samaro. Bramley wins it. Back it again. Gets a foot in. Now, here's Mullen. It's one by Di Bartolo. And Steve got some numbers forward here, but... Annie Grove was a long way forward, and she had to be. Macri and Clay's just been held up. And it looks a bit of an injury here because very quickly I heard the call of Harriet Harriet, which is undoubtedly a call to Harriet Burnett. Yeah, 100% push. She's already at the bench and ready to come on, so that substitution will happen. Yeah. Mullen, well, gee, I really hope that uh, it's not anything too troubling. And as we mentioned before, a player that's had a pretty rotten run mm -hmm. with injuries. We know she is a super tough player, so for her to go down and stay down um, generally means that she's had a bit of a knock. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Hayley. She is... I don't think she knows she's coming off yet. Yeah. Well, has the call officially been made, though? I think, I think they're going to get Harriet Burnett ready in any case and uh, drop ball to restart play. Johns. Let's get Macri going, but Holmes should have that covered. Gray. Mullen has just come back on. Samaro, good touch for Bowler. Might come to Di Bartolo. Once again, Hodgson was strong in the tackle. That's a precise ball for Daru who turns. But Bowler's there for City. Gray. Jenkins long. Samara's probably offside and she knew it, so she just didn't interfere with the play. Comes through to Grove. Sorry to interject again, Paul and Haley, but Katie Bowler has to be one of the most impressive young players going around in South Australia right now. Her game is fantastic. She's been a delight to watch today. I'll tell you what, depending on how the rest of it unfolds, if especially if City win. Oh, and uh, McCauley copped one there from uh, Quigley's ball. Hodgson trying to bring it forward, McCauley scoops it away, but yeah, if, certainly if this game keeps going the way it's going, and certainly if it does go City's way, she's already an early shout for player of the match, Katie Bowler. She's been outstanding for City today, and all season. And from midfield, she's been very, very prolific. Nine goals in 13 league games. Now she's got two in four cup matches. 
throwing for West. We've played over an hour now of the 2022 WNPL and WSL Cup final. West Adelaide and Adelaide City 1-1, the original rivalry. And this fixture being played for the first time at this new facility in Jeps Cross, Service FM Stadium. Laura Johns, Matt Cree. Good play to ensure Bianca Gray got no further. Throwing for City. Great crowd in today. Of course, we've had a great day of women's and girls football with several cup finals uh, being played earlier, both at junior level and in lower divisions. And many have stayed to watch the main event quickly. Can't get past Holmes. Mullen seems to be okay. John's now. Pritchard. Mullen. Let's get an angle for the cross or the ball in. Still going. Quigley. Try to get Mullen going again. She's got space. Can she keep it in, Mallory Mullen? She just has to turn away. Gets the cross in. Johns. Oh, and uh, you can see what she was trying to do. Spear it out for Pritchard on the right. It's going to be another West throw, and the pressure continues to build. Hodgson now. Wackett trying to touch it inboard for Daru. Pritchard! Jenkins claims. Now it could go one of two ways, couldn't it, Haley? The pressure would just continue to build to a point where the chances will come for West, but City could also catch them napping, couldn't they, as yep. they just sort of go into this routine? <laughs> yeah, they're both still trying to, I think, stick to their own game plans, and we'll just see who is able to execute it um, better and who can hit the back of the net first. Blackett pushing forward. City always so quick to close down, but how much of this match can they play without the ball, I think is the big question. Daru. Hodgson, that's not a bad ball, but Holmes is there. Out for a throw and I wonder if Holmes moving to centre back has a little bit to do with Angelo Paul just wanting to have his such an experienced and decorated player just marshalling things for his team. Caroline Poplis now. Matt Free. That's good. Laura Johns on the overlap. Johns against Holmes. Still brings it in board and Bianca Gray had to get it away. Atkins now, bowler. Wins the throw. Guys, one thing that might influence this game in the next sort of 25 or so minutes, the weather is definitely changing. The clouds are coming in and I would not be surprised if there is some rain not too far away. Well, it wouldn't be a uh, cup final if uh, that didn't occur. <laughs> And I'm He's starting to get cold in the commentary box, so I don't know about you down there at Pitch Lab, uh, Spiro. <laughs> I'm frozen through, if I'm being honest. I asked for a tea or coffee half-time, guys, and you didn't even bring me one of them. Uh, well, you know, we're busy up here, mate. It's full-time up here, not part-time like it is down there, buddy. <laughs> no, I don't really mean that. Throw in for West Adelaide. And uh, always great to have insights of what's going on at ground level. Because right now, we expect that the benches will start to get more involved and we're going to be seeing changes. Now, Samaro's found bowler. Can she get Di Bartolo going? But Hodgson comes back to defend. Johns. It's not a bad ball for Matt Cree, but she's not able to get hold of it. It wasn't easy. Throw in to Gray. Caroline Popolis has a bit of time. 
Grove. The foot up the field. It's over Matt Cree, it's over Gray. Holmes now. Gray. Good turn. But uh, the ball doesn't find any teammates. And uh, Florence Russell is being readied on the bench for Adelaide City, it looks like. You get any idea of who might be coming, Spiro? It'll be Valeria Grajado, Paul, number seven. Thank you. It's a very like for like type of change as far as players that uh, play similar positions. Very young player, Florence Russell. And uh, we're just waiting for the moment. I know the board just said six, Paul, but it's definitely seven. There yeah, he's been there changed. It is. And Florence now to join the machine. And almost hard to believe that she played in Division 6 last year. She's got three goals in seven league appearances. And uh, one of the young brigade here, and she looks a real prospect, Florence Russell. On she comes. Yasmina Kasumovic also getting ready, Paul. Thank you, Spirit. That's another attacking option. Bowler. Holmes. Good to see that that sort of faith shown in these players. Angelo Paul not afraid to inject the youth and could also have the effect of bringing that element of surprise. Some of the more experienced players, they're just so... These guys all know each other so well on both sides. Quigley. Holds on. Good ball for Mullen. Mallory Mullen, can she make a shot? Mullen! Jenkins has it. to get some distance on that to get it to Di Bartolo, but it's bounced past to Hodgson. Like it now. Always so aware of her, but she's turned well here, and she's found Quigley. Pritchard. Macri. Georgia Macri wants to get the shot in. Oh, just over. Then knocking on the door. Yeah, they're starting to really come for it now. Um, but I must say that Holmes and um, McCauley are doing really well back there. So they are giving Angelo Paul that license to keep adding the attacking players on. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, maybe that's a part of the plan. Looks like uh, Spiro is Harriet Burnett warming up. Yeah, it'll be Marilyn Mullen to come off for West ne next. Thank you. Oh, here's a chance for Pritchard! Once again, a West shot finds the city keeper. But, gee, the pressure's really high right now. Holmes now. It's a pretty good ball. Harold Ampopoulos has beaten Russell to it. Put out by Bowler. Yeah, before the last five minutes, both keepers with not much to do, um, but we're definitely feeling the heat on Jenkins at the moment. Yeah, and really... If a couple of shots had gone a couple of metres one way or the other, well, she could have really been called into action. And luckily for her and for her team, they've mostly been straight at it, but I don't want to give too many chances away. This could be another one. Mullen. Mallory Mullen! Oh, yes! That's a great goal by Mallory Mullen to give West Adelaide the lead in the 71st minute. They were knocking and knocking and knocking. And in the end, a player who is probably coming off very, very shortly has scored her second of the afternoon. And West Adelaide are in front. I'll be very happy that she's the tough player that she is and she got back up and stayed on. How fantastic for her, especially um, following on from... As we said last season, with Inter, she didn't get to play uh, the grand final. Um, this will be quite a day for her. Great ball in there by Pritchard to find her. And 
that's just a perfect shot. And we'll say oh, sooner or later, one of those shots is going to go the other side of the keeper. And it did then. Now, City trying to respond straight away. But Daru can bring the ball away. Harriet Burnett has sat back down, Paul. Sorry. Wow. So the change is not being made yet, anyway. Caroline Poplis. And I guess the other question is, look, I'm not sure that we know exactly how Mullen's going physically. We've mentioned that more than once she's she's been in the wars a bit, so is there a question of just waiting to see if she can keep up that intense level of performance that she so often gives and has given today? But what an absolute luxury for West who can keep... Bennett on the bench, 13 goals in 15 appearances, and oh. she can get told to sit back down. That's incredible. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I mean, she's just about been a goal a game player, hasn't she? Harriet Burnett had a tremendous season, and uh, she still has to wait her turn. That's how good this I will. It, it is being made now. Mallory Mullen to come off. What a performance. She told Tracy that she didn't want to come. <laughs> of course she doesn't. <laughs> and she, she could have two broken legs and I don't think she'd go off she willingly. She was trying so hard to wave away the substitution and Tracy was yeah, Tracy Jenkins was not having any of it. No, and as we mentioned, it's a great sub to be able to put on in Harriet Burnett. Now Samaro coming off for Yasmina Kasumovic to for Adelaide City. Yeah. And... Uh, but she'll probably go straight to number nine, Kasumovic. Samaro's had a great cup. She scored in every round except this one. But uh, not today. And to be fair, really been starved of too many opportunities. Blackett with the free kick. Quigley! Just didn't quite sit for her. And... While all that was going on, uh, Dylan Holmes received a yellow card. So that's one for each side. Matty Daru with a card for West and Holmes with one for Adelaide City. We're in the 74th minute now. And just wonder what City can do to turn this around. They've gone to their talented but young players to try to get themselves back in the game. And here goes Russell. Gets a great ball back for Bowler. Bowler to make it 2-2. Great save, Annie Grove. It's back to Bowler, though. And that could be a penalty. It is. She was bowled over, if you'll excuse the pun. And Adelaide City have a chance to equalise within minutes. Yeah, absolutely clear-cut penalty there. I don't think anyone can argue against that one. <laughs> Great play by Florence Russell. Bowler's shot hit was intercepted, but then Emily Hodgson gave away the foul. And who else but Dylan Holmes to take it? Housemates, Dylan Holmes and Annie Grove. Two people that know each other so well, not just players. And now they face each other from the penalty spot. Holmes. Saved by Grove! Saved! And it's a corner. Holmes gambled on going down the middle. But Grove stayed in position and saves the penalty. A massive moment in this game. And he might need to find a new ride home, I think. <laughs> Took the words out of my mouth there, Hayley. Holmes with the header! Well, just on that, uh, and I don't think I'm revealing too much here, but they are housemates and, and great mates, but when uh, City, uh, when West, I should say, clinched the premiership last year, last week, Annie Grove brought the trophy home, stuck it on the kitchen bench in the middle of the night so that... Uh, Dylan Holmes would wake up and see it in the morning. 
course, they will be teammates at Adelaide United again this season. But right now, they want to beat each other to this cup. Grove for West, Holmes for City. We mentioned the re-signing of Annie earlier, but um, we also had the re-signing of Dylan as well for another season. Yep. Fantastic for Adelaide United to have those two. It's Annie Grove is, of course, not an Adelaide native. Nova Castrian has been at several different A-League W clubs, but it was at Adelaide United where she made a breakthrough into the first team, Annie Grove. Had a great season last season in Adelaide United's first foray into the A-League W finals. And... Uh, I'm sure we're all delighted here in Adelaide that she's back on board for season 22-23. But right now, we've got domestic matters to deal with. The 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup. And here's Katie Bowler trying to get City back on level terms. Bowler pushes past and uh, she might get the foul there. No. Referee Wordsworth points to the goal area. And it's going to be a goal kick. Laurie Mullen there on screen. Paul just icing that thigh. But again, everything good for Adelaide City coming through Caddy Bowler and having an excellent game. Shame if uh, she ends up on the losing side. She's made massive, massive strides this season. I know I've banged on about it a bit today, but I think one to watch out for in the future for sure. Oh, definitely. And look, you know, one for the present, really. She's just been fantastic today in what is a really, really tough game for anybody trying to give City some attacking impetus. Quigley, Macri's offside. When the ball's come out to her, she's done so well on so many occasions to just hold on and make things happen in an attacking sense. We're in the 78th minute, and pretty soon time will be getting tight. Adelaide City have done so well to take the lead Two goals from Mellory Mullen has the favourites in control. Hasn't been easy for them, but West have been on the front foot for so much of this battle. It'll be a throw in for West. John's back to Harold Ampopoulos. Back to Grove. Well, no, Bramley comes in. Gets it up the wing to Macri. Door closes on her. Atkins. John's intercepts. And, uh, oh, goodness me, uh, Jenkins came a long way. And Rachel Quigley wasn't far away. Holmes now. That's a really good ball for Russell. Here goes Russell. She's got baller in the middle. Grove gets there just in time. And Florence Russell has made a difference to this Adelaide City side. She's looking like she could be a player that creates or takes a chance if she's given too many opportunities. Throw for Johns. Well, when you thought that West Adelaide taking the lead might almost close this game out. City are starting to show some real attacking intent for the first time in some time in this game. Bramley. Matt Cree. Atkins dispossesses her, but cleared by Johns. Jink. Tracy Jenkins on the bench is urging her team to get forward after that clearance. And as you can see, they pressed right up to within 10 metres of the halfway line. Grove now. Oh, and uh, Blackett quickly went for the same ball, so it's going to fall City's way for Nicholas now. Kasumovic. Goes all the way back to Holmes. Gray. Di Bartolo has swung out to the right. Holmes now. 
actually find the ball over the top to get Russell going again. That one will be Bramley's. Quigley. Burnett is on the move. Holmes read it. Jenkins. Chooses to go out to the left-hand side for Nicholas. And suddenly there's players up forward for City when they need them. Di Bartolo. The ball just from Russell just went a little bit wide for her to kill some momentum. Pritchard tries to get it away and Tolland has put it out for a goal kick. Still really positive passage of play for Adelaide City there. You can start to feel the desperation as the clock ticks down both on the field and in the supporters in the stand. The, the atmosphere is rising here. Yeah, they've looked to have moved to almost a bit of a 4-4-2 now because Kasumovic and Russell, I feel like, are definitely playing right on the front line. Grove to take the goal kick. We're in the 82nd minute. And good touch from Blackett. It's going to be a free kick to West. And just a chance for them to relieve the pressure. It's against Tolland. Zoe Tolland, who, like Bowler, came over from a, an excellent spell at the NTC. And she was in the WMPL team of the year last year, Zoe Tolland, and has made... The move to Adelaide City, a successful one as well, just as the former NTC teammate Katie Bowler. The Blackett's almost kept that ball in, now it's gone out. It's going to be a throw in for City on their left hand side. The supporters are starting to get really, really vocal here. This game has been a great contest. Here's Blacker. Quigley. Back to Blacker. That's well intercepted. Here's Harold Ampopoulos. Holmes under pressure from Burnett. Calmly back to Jenkins. Quigley though. Wants to get it out wide to Matt Cree, but Gray's there. Holmes, two experienced players. Di Bartolo, another one. Holmes now. Di Bartolo. She's deeper than she would often be. Atkins out to Gray. Under pressure from Johns now. Having to go a long way in reverse. Jenkins long. It's over Harold Ampopoulos, but Bramley's there to cover. Grove. Fritchard under it. Just goes over her, but now she gets it back under control. Nicholas. Under pressure from Blackett. Still going. Gray now. That's a really good play by Matt Cree. And every little battle right now is being applauded by the crowd and the respective supporters of each side. Di Bartolo heads on. Harold Ampopoulos the other way. Bramley says, live. My ball puts it out. to Bartolo. Does well there. She's going to get a free for John's foul. And you know, Tracy Jenkins, who doesn't often get up and about and gesticulate and yell out too much. She's more animated than you normally see her at the moment. As her team needs to hold on to this 2-1 lead. Holmes with the long ball now. One again by Bramley. Gray. In board. Hodgson clears. Holmes now. And uh, on that occasion, the West offside trap worked. Brought all the City players back and Grover's on, Grove on the ball and players yelling out to Kasumovic, go and make her pick it up. Goes along the West Keeper. Wants Blacker. Brings it down. Does really well, Blacker. Quigley. Wants to get it going for Burnett. It's 
Tidied up by McCauley. And it's a west throw. And maybe now, Haley, they just can try to get it back on their terms after City have had a lively few minutes. Absolutely. Um, I don't think West have been the victim of too many late goals, so I think they'll have um, some confidence on their side that they sh hopefully can see this game out um, for the next five minutes. Um, but never say never, and we know yeah, City is a great side and they will not give up until the end. Yeah, absolutely. And Really? Just pause for a moment. Hodgson, Blackhurt. Is it in board? Intercepted. Really, the only time that West have suffered this year from being ahead and having a team come back was a few weeks ago here in a league match against Salisbury Inter and, and even on that occasion to be perfectly fair they squandered a lot of opportunities to put that game out of sight but yeah I believe they were 2-0 up in that game and they gave up the two goal lead yeah but now they can try to control as best they can the rest of this match which only has three minutes to play plus stoppage time I'm not sure there'll be a lot there's been a few changes not really much time for injury so it could be as few as three minutes like it trying to win the corner there but it's gone out for a goal kick City players running forward with some urgency now expect the minimum of a three minutes Paul like you said Spirit. just had it confirmed yep. Okay, yep just had it confirmed Russell Tolland it's not a bad ball but Hodgson just got it off away from Bowler and has put it out for a throw taken quickly McCauley Here's Tolland. McCauley now. Holmes. They're really conscious of Holmes' ability to play excellent balls forward and get players the other side of the offside trap. And Rachel Quigley has really started to close her down quickly in those situations. McCauley now. Tries to just chip it through for Nicholas. But Blackett's done well and gets the return ball from Burnett. Quigley in the middle, Rachel Quigley, and now Daru, and it's fallen for Quigley, she's onside, Rachel Quigley to finish it, it's 3-1, Rachel Quigley wins the full west, they are going to be the 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup winners, they've been made to work hard for it, but they are surely home now just about to say before um, quickly got the ball there that it wouldn't be a West game without her name on the score sheet and there it is but it was still that unselfish play initially where she puts the ball off where she really could have taken it herself as well um, so that's a beautiful thing about this team is the prolific goal scorers but um, there's all obviously a really good culture there as well yeah very well said and quickly has now scored her 34th goal of the season in all competitions absolutely phenomenal and that's just in 20 games I believe uh, West just surpassed 100 goals between this competition and the league um, last week as well yeah and, and as you say and as you say she's not exactly a goal hog Rachel quickly she is a real team player and despite that I'm not sure what happened there. 34 for the season <laughs> phenomenal I might get to see Sienna Cavino come on just for a cameo well she sure deserves it Sienna she been a big part of this squad for a few years and as we remember Spiro she played an amazing game in the grand final last year and it says a lot about the strength of this squad that she's not in the starting 11 but she's going to be a part of the West Adelaide side he's about to secure a second trophy in eight days. That's good. That's won two trophies. That's going to be surely a free kick on Holmes after the advantage did not materialise. Um, but 
Only two trophies in the eight years of West Adelaide's senior women's program before last weekend. And in eight days, they've doubled the number. About to win their second cup to go with their two premierships. And after today, they will be hoping to see if they can complete a treble and their first ever championship. That's what awaits this team going into the final series in a couple of weeks' time as the top seed. Quigley gets Burnett going again. Burnett now, she can go to the corner flag. She goes herself. But, uh, that's straight to Jenkins. And more than half of the recommended three minutes of stoppage time has been played. Daru, greater try to get it full but sliced away for a goal kick uh, for a throw in I should say which Laura Johns can take and Sienna Cavino is going to get her chance coming on for Georgia Macri it's a popular substitution something that she's as we mentioned genuinely earned she could very easily be in this first first team. Worth remembering too, Paul, that she broke her leg earlier this year, so... Yeah, uh, good point, Spiro. She's come back, and here she goes straight away. Cavino has pushed up the left wing past Tolland, and uh, Tolland comes back to tackle and put the ball out. We are possibly just 30 seconds away from the final whistle. Laura Johns with the throw-in. And there it is, West Adelaide, the winners of the 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup Final. And can they emulate Adelaide City of 2019 and Salisbury Inter of 2021 and go on and make it a treble of senior trophies this season? Absolutely brilliant performance in the second half. They made absolutely sure that it was played on their terms and only on a couple of occasions was their goal threatened. Certainly needed one big moment to protect their lead when Dylan Holmes had a penalty opportunity and it was saved by Annie Grove. And once that happened, West made sure and Rachel Quigley finished things off for them late in the game. Haley, just a fantastic game, but all credit to the winners. They've really been the dominant team today. Yeah, absolutely. That was classic West Adelaide right there, and they've really cemented their championship credentials today. Um, but hats off to LA City as well. And Angelo Paul, I know he's fairly humble in um, thanking his predecessor for setting this team up um, in his first year of coaching this side. But we've seen the biggest impact in that game came from the signings the young signings that he made at the start of the season. So the future is bright for that Adelaide City side as well. You know, that's a really good point you make because players like Russell in particular, I think, has got a massive future. Kasumovic uh, is also a player who I think we're going to see a, an awful lot more of as she gets more experience. And really, you know, with players like Bowler and uh, Tolland as well, there's a huge amount of upside. I mean, I wouldn't even say that they're still up and coming players they are just about established as we saw today a tremendous performance from them and uh, you know it's not all I mean you're, you're obviously going to be disappointed when you lose a cup final but it's not all downside for City. No we've heard about the added pressure coming from LA City you know they are such a prolific side they've got such massive history. We've got uh, We've got Spiro with Mellory Mullen, one of the heroes of the day. Spiro, take it away. Thanks very much, Paul. Mellory, congratulations. First and foremost, how's the injury? Yeah, it's all right. Just a bit of a corky. I could feel it. I was like, I'm not feeling 100%. Wish I could have stayed on. But unfortunately, you know, we have girls on the bench. We have that depth. And I was like, give another girl a run. And yeah. Talk us through that goal. Oh, I just saw it open and I was like, fuck it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, there you go. I was just like... I was open, why not have a shot, and paid off, thankfully. Tell us what this means. I mean, we, we're speaking about the fact that West Adelaide have only won two titles in their history, and in, in one week you've doubled that tally. What, is, what does this cup win mean to this team and this club? Oh, absolutely everything. This team is family now. Like, 
we love each other so much and coming out and getting this win just means absolutely everything. We knew we could do it and we got the job done. So, Congratulations one more time, Mallory. Enjoy the uh, medal ceremony and excellent goal. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Apologies to everyone at home. That's uh, one of the uh, drawbacks of live TV, but uh, I'm I, sure you can forgive us. I don't think there's any need to apologise. Uh, I'd say it's good for the ratings, Spiro. Uh, I no issues up here at all. And uh, look, you know, that's really what Mallory Mullen's all about. She wants it so much. She's a player with unbelievable ability, but she's also so motivated and uh, she gives so much energy to this side and will hopefully continue to do so in the A-League W competition as well. Just seeing some of the uh, presentations being made. It's going to be the officials coming up first. Uh, very well uh, official today. The fourth official, Tom Brink Brinkworth. The assistants, Paula Orlandi and Kristen Nugent. And referee today, Curtis Wordsworth. And uh, after that, we expect that uh, the runners-up will receive their medals. The Adelaide City side, brave today, but against will now be made such to today's a strong City. and polished Number opponent. 10, Akins. Akins. So they're going to come Number up 19, in Katie what looks like an alphabetical order, because it's four, Daniela Alison Atkins first and then Katie Bowler. Number five, Bianca Gray. And uh, as we mentioned, Valeria, it's a, a real mix of... Uh, some of their uh, players six, that have been with Dylan the team Holmes. for so, so long and some Number some really six, fresh new players that represent the future. Yeah, and I think Number we one, put this added Jenkins. extra pressure on City because we know that they, they've been Number so good and the club has such a rich history. Um, but they did really well Number today. 13, um, but Lezinski. West, are they unstoppable this season? Number 20, Abby Lucas. Yeah, that is the question. Number five. I mean, in all three meetings between West and City this year, Number 11, that was Alicia probably Nicholas. the one that was played most on West terms, I think. Uh, as much as it may have seemed Number that 18, uh, Mawa, City Soloro. were frustrating them, particularly in the first two, half, and able to sort of prevent them from Number getting eight, too many Alana opportunities. Osito. In the end, uh, 14, I thought West Zikos. took the ascendancy earlier than they did uh, in Adelaide that match City that Angelo we've referred Ball. back to a few times at Adelaide City Park. Absolutely, team and I think after they caught that Matolo. second goal, um, West, Physio, the West Tristia, players were all trying to see who could get onto the, the goal sheet. Star, Paul Pezos and Brian. Yeah. Of course, things could have been so different um, if Holmes's penalty had been successful. Um, it's hard to know if that would have given City a, a real spring in their step. Um, I'm sure it would have given them a lot of confidence, but would it have changed the shape of play? West don't really strike me as a team that would have put their heads down and just, you know, lost their attacking impetus at that point. The next no, um, is we didn't see too many true opportunities um, on goal from City either, so it's hard to see where that third goal would have come from. From West Adelaide, Mallory Mullen. Not surprisingly with her two goals, Mallory Mullen is the player of the match and comes forward to receive her medal for that from Football SA CEO Michael Carter and Jane Rathjen, a member of the Football SA board. And uh, also there, uh, helping with the medal ceremony is Marie Spagnoletti, formerly, of course, a player and a successful coach of Metro United. And uh, now part of the staff at Football SA as the senior women's coordinator. Maddie Daru, uh, sorry, Olivia Bramley, Leading number six, the West Sean team Eastham. up. Number 19, Emily Gale. These players Grove. have number four, shown Zoe that they're Ham a great Hopolis. team, not just a great number two, group of Emily Hodgson. decorated individual players. Number 11, Laura Johns. And that, I think, is... Number eight, Georgia Macri. The secret to them winning these two trophies Number 15, that the they've won the match, this Malary season. Mullen. And Number makes one, them favourite to finally Number break that championship Anna duck Pritchard. that West Adelaide wants to do so Number much. 10, Rachel, Rachel Quigley. Quigley. And Number 12, 12 Nicole, Nicole Tilly. Tilly. I see Erin Murphy, the reserve keeper. Coach of West Adelaide, she played Jenkins. in the grand final last year that West lost to, si to uh, Salisbury Inter. Team and manager, Tammy Brooks. Like Cavino, the influx Harry of Sikoros. great players has 
And Meant that that she's not always in the start, not often in the starting eleven, and but it just gives it makes this squad so strong. Yeah, out of the um, West squad today, almost all starting players have also played at least one reserves game as well. So it just goes to show that they have so much talent in that side that you're just not guaranteed that starting spot at all. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I just noticed as uh, we were preparing for this game that none of these uh, none of these players. Uh, in the West side have been ever present during the league season. They've all Tracy. missed at least one match. And the Coles are forward to receive, to receive the trophy, trophy for 2022. Well, Nicole Blackett has been a runner-up with West Adelaide on so many occasions, and I'm sure that lifting a trophy for the second time in a week is not something that she's going to get tired of. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners for season 2022, West Adelaide. Here come the rest of the players to celebrate. It's going to be, a, am sure, a, a great celebration, but probably not one that will last well into the week. There'll be league action again next week. And even though West Adelaide have wrapped up the premiership in top spot, they're going to want to make sure that they tick every box, hit every mark in their run to the finals to set themselves up for championship glory. Well, what we've seen today, Haley, we've seen what City can do against them. We've seen what Inter can do against them. But is it, is it a case of if they bring their best, it's pretty hard to knock them over? I think so. I think unless they let the occasion get to them on the day, um, they're going to be pretty hard to beat. And there is still some more football left in the season, and we have potentially seen a grand final preview today. Um, so, so exciting to see what the future holds. Yeah. I mean, they're a pretty experienced and hardened group of players. And in that sense, it's hard to see them getting overawed by the grand final. Absolutely, and if they manage that championship, then we can finally stop asking them if the, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the failures of past uh, are motivating them and ask them if the success is now motivating them in the future. There's, there's probably no greater <laughs> motivator than them continually getting asked by all of us. Are those uh, previous narrow defeats, those previous heartbreaks, the things that are keeping you guys going and keeping you motivated? But this group reminds me of some teams of the past that have won all before them. You look at the Metro teams of 2015-16, Adelaide City in 2019, and well, very much for much of 2017 to 2020, and Salisbury into last year. Spiro has Sienna Cavino with him. Spiro, take it away. Thanks, Paul. Sienna, best 90 seconds of your life? Oh, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I mean, I enjoyed watching it. I love my team. And on, like in the dugouts or on the pitch, entertainment. The reason I want to chat to you is because, and I know we said this privately to you after last year's grand final, and I'm sorry I've taken you away from the celebrations, but we thought you were the best player in the park last year in the grand final, but you lost. I know it's not a championship, but it is a cup. Does that... Does that make that a little bit better from last season? Definitely. And I think it makes all of us excited for the playoffs and then the other grand final. I think having this finally, helps us have that confidence to take it all the way. You're coming off a pretty bad injury this year. How's the recovery? Pretty good. Um, yeah, broke my collarbone. Uh, and Sorry, I said I broke. I said on the coverage you broke your foot. It was your collarbone. It was your dad who broke his ankle, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah on the same day, so dad broke his foot. I broke my collarbone. End of the first round. Um, so two months off, and I just worked really hard to come back and to just be able to run and be with the girls again is incredible. So hopefully, I'll be um, playing a bit more as for the rest of the season. Congratulations one more time. Go enjoy the celebrations with your teammates. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Paul. Thanks, Spiro, and uh, great for Sienna Cavino to be able to enjoy this. And, uh, yes, uh, she did miss a couple of the champagne sprays, but I think there's going to be plenty of them before this day is out. And uh, West Adelaide's on fire. 
We did see a pretty epic picture of um, Nicole Blackett after the Premiership win last week, um, spraying the champagne, but I reckon that's just been trumped by Mallory Mullen <laughs> um, sculling out of the bottle and out of the cup already. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're entitled to it. And, you know, they have given us, I feel, we mentioned those great sides of recent years like the Metro team of 15-16 and City of 17-20, to 20, Salisbury to last year. Those sides all give us something to remember about how great they are and the way they overcome, you know, any adversities they have in games and, and the fact that they're just full of winners. And I just feel like this West side's giving us that as well. There is that shot. <laughs> um, terrific Adam Butler shot there. Um, absolutely, but you know, even just these two trophy wins so far this week, um, this side has cemented themselves in um, West Adelaide Hellas history, um, regardless of what happens in the future. Yeah, the celebrations will continue. Um, I think uh, we might be able to get a couple more interviews uh, if we're lucky, and we'll give you his, uh, a couple of the highlights. Katie Bowler taking the lead, sprung the offside trap beautifully. What about that? Just taking it around an A-League W keeper. I love the cheeky look to the, the ref as well, just to check she's on and she kept going. <laughs> yeah, as she gets older, she'll remember not to do that, just to uh, <laughs> give anybody any idea that she might have been off. She wasn't. Yeah, she timed that run perfectly. Big celebration on the bench because they really did want to score first today. But what about that? Macri dispossessing Tolland. Quigley, Mullen, 1-1. Absolutely terrific. I was going to grab Emily Hodgson, Paul, but she's um, having a moment. Obviously, she's had a big loss this uh, this week, and so I think I'll I'll let her be. Yeah, look, no, good call, Spiro. And uh, as uh, if you missed it earlier, she lost her beloved grandfather earlier this week. Someone who we knew and loved, who would often talked to us uh, when we uh, were off air in our broadcasts and. Just love to watch Emily play and some of her teammates uh, getting around her at the moment. And uh, we uh, thoughts with the whole family. And uh, wonderful for her to win it today. But definitely one of these moments where I'm sure she's reflecting on how much she would have loved to see him here again. What did you make of the tactical move at half-time to uh, drop Dylan Holmes to centre back and... Uh Bring on Danny Bartolo, guys. I'm not, I'm not sure it worked for City. Danny was obviously uh, coming off a few weeks off and just looked a little bit behind the pace. I, I felt, and I mean, Dylan's a very versatile player, but I think they lost a lot of midfield when when she went back to defence. I think it just gets down to uh, what Angelo was trying to do and make sure his defence was settled in a situation where they were going to need to score at some point during the game, and maybe just try to change a few things up. I think that move set up maybe a couple of the later moves where players like Russell and Kasumovic come on. And let's not forget, Spiro, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Dylan Holmes scores that penalty and things can be very different. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I do agree. They, City almost looked like they, they just didn't have another one another one of those in them, did they, after they, they, they didn't score that penalty. It just felt like it sucked the life out of them, really. But yeah, I, I, I accept your point, Paul. I just felt like they lost quite a lot of the dominance they had. What I felt was a, a dominance in the midfield in the first half by sending Dylan back. But, um, you know, those are, the, those are the risks you take in football, really, isn't it? You know, you, sometimes those ta tactical moves work, or sometimes they don't. Unfortunately for today, it was, Bradley City wasn't to be. But Yeah, we're just looking at the replay at the moment of the foul. And, you know, I know uh, I'd be amazed if Dylan Holm miskicked. I'm sure she thought that she was going to outsmart Grove or potentially by going down down the middle and Grove diving out of the way. I mean, with those guys being housemates, I'm sure they've been on the training pitch together many, many times and probably taken uh, penalties uh, in just that sort of situation. Well, not in the situation of it being in a cup final, but uh, certainly uh, testing each other out in those uh, circumstances. Let's have a look at some of the stats 21 shots to West, 6 to City, 10 on target for West and 3 to City, 3 corners to West, 1 to City, 
Not many fouls in this game. Six by West, four by City. Two offsides, West, one City, and one yellow card for each side. Uh, that's uh, not on the stats at the moment, but Dylan Holmes did get one for City, as well as Matty Daru getting one for West Adelaide. Well, final, final thoughts, uh, team, uh, might go to you first, uh, Spiro, uh, how you saw it and how you sum it up. Yeah, look, I thought it was an interesting battle. I mean, the game went from 0 to 100 in that last 15 minutes, I felt. But before that, it was a real interesting battle, a real tactical battle. And, you know, I, I, Adelaide City will obviously be disappointed that they've lost, but I think they can take a lot from this game. They held West Adelaide for a long time, and I know we've spoken about it quite regularly that they've been the best team by a mile this year, West Adelaide, but Adelaide City just worry them, and I would be taking quite a bit of heart from that. I know that's probably hard for them to accept right now after losing a cup final, but I think they should take a lot of heart from this result because, you know, even the third goal that uh, uh, that Rachel Quigley scored, it was only off a deflection from an Adelaide City defender, so they were right in that right to the death. So pl there's plenty of positives to take out, but, you know, from what we've seen, I think, uh, Hayley, uh, West Adelaide are going to be very hard to, to knock over this year. Most definitely. Um, I think what West will also take out of that is that they did score a few um, from open play rather than just set pieces. So we know that you know they can do the set pieces, they can do the open play goals. Is there anything else that they cannot do? Um, but as we said earlier, City um, should take heart that you know this youthful side really keep taking West. You know, not just in this game, but in the round ten game as well. So they can do it more than once. Um, and if that you know, is different, say, if they both make it uh, to the grand final, then, you know, we can have a very different result. Thanks for that, Hayley, and thank you, Spiro, and uh, thanks to Football SA for putting together such a fantastic broadcast today. It's uh, been a tremendous occasion. The 2022 WMPL and WSL Cup Final played here at Service FM Stadium for the first time. We're signing off now. Thank you for joining us wherever you've joined us uh, through either the Facebook stream or YouTube. WMPL returns next weekend with round 17. And then in another couple of weeks after that, we'll be into the WMPL final series to find out who will be champions of the competition this season. Thanks for joining us. Have a great rest of the weekend.
create light. It takes patience. It takes knowledge. It takes a deep understanding of how light behaves. How do you illuminate the sporting feats of champions? Feats that inspire us all. Feats that move nations. It takes people, scientists, engineers and marketers. It takes materials that can withstand all elements. It takes machinery, cutting edge machinery. It takes a sustainable approach using recyclable, reclaimable materials and offsetting emissions. It takes pressure, pressure to expose and eliminate weakness so that all that's left is strength. But more than anything, it takes belief. Belief in your product, belief in your team, belief in yourself and your ability to outpace and outlive the competition. It's that belief that creates lives. range of sports fuel. Gatorade. You fuel us, we fuel you. Every jump. Every petrol pump. Member deal and welcome meal. Every gutsy save. Friendly wave. Every ray of light. And movie night. Every helping hand. And every taking a stand. Every day, everything we do helps our members to save, enjoy, and simply keep on moving on. Imagine storing energy now and using it later. Imagine traveling time zones without the dirty footprints. Imagine being remote yet connected like never before. Or knowing there's enough light to wait out the storm. Imagine knowing it's there when you need it most. Imagine neighbourhoods pooling power and communities run by the sun. Or having lights that see you coming and safely guide you home. We're connecting South Australians to an energy future we can all be proud of. So imagine the power of possibility. Sure. This beer looks pretty good, but actually, it's what you can't see that makes this beer at Coopers. Because every drop contains 160 years of passion. Determination to keep a family recipe unchanged. And proud, fierce independence. And it's this stuff that will always make it forever original. Every deal. Every welcome meal, gutsy save, and every friendly wave. Every helping hand, and every taking a stand. Every day, everything we do helps you to... Keep on moving on. How do you create light? It takes patience. It takes knowledge. It takes a deep understanding of how light behaves. 
How do you illuminate the sporting feats of champions? Feats that inspire us all. Feats that move nations. It takes people, scientists, engineers and marketers. It takes materials that can withstand all elements. It takes machinery, cutting edge machinery. It takes a sustainable approach using recyclable, reclaimable materials and offsetting emissions. It takes pressure. Pressure to expose and eliminate weakness so that all that's left is strength. But more than anything, it takes belief. Belief in your product, belief in your team, belief in yourself and your ability to outpace and outlive the competition. It's that belief that creates light.